welcome to the 2021 Viking Class Extreme. It's really great to be back live. We're here at our pre-event, which is the Riverboat Schweck Cruise. Uh, we're having a great time, and we hope to have a good time this weekend. We should have some great matches coming your way. We'll be streaming the finals of the ABT Open, as well as the Grand Crystal Beaver 22 Masters event. Uh, we hope to see you here next year, and we're going to enjoy some tacos and two for one margaritas. All right. See you next year. See ya. Hi guys, welcome back to another uh, ABT Backgammon Tournament. This one is live from Minnesota. It's very cool, it's starting up live tournaments again, fascinating. I've done three commentaries, but this is the first one I've ever done online. I'm joined here by my very respectable colleague, Frank Talbot. Frank, welcome to the, to the, uh, to the commentary. Thank you, Ryan, glad to be here. I want to thank the USBGF for making this stream possible. And um, um, go ahead, Ryan, um, finish the introduction. So a very exciting match here in the finals. We have Jerry Tanzi, who's a female grandmaster, very impressive PR average of 3.11, at least according to the site. Uh, Greg Tunnel on top is a, he's actually playing backhand for about 10 years, but this is actually his first big open tournament. So obviously he must be thrilled to be in the finals in this first one. Uh, he says he wants us to mention that he's a huge tennis fan. So I'm a tennis fan as well. Always fun to see someone else. <laughs> so this is a double elimination tournament. Jerry is undefeated one, which means Greg Tunnel has to beat him twice. This one's to 11. The next one's going to be till nine. If he wins. Obviously, if Jerry wins, it's all over. He gets crowned as the Minnesota 2021 champion. Starting off here with a 6-1, very solid roll. Usually they say if you're if you gotta lose twice, that's um, 75% to win it all. But in practice, it doesn't seem to work out that way. It seems like the trailer <laughs> wins a little more than that. Double threes is very, very solid. Getting in the cube territory pending a terrible roll. Well, he's got the four points, so that's a very good point. Now I'll make the two points. Six yeah. four makes the two. Start you thinking be thinking about, about double. Gotta of be thinking just about double. Think about it. In my opinion, it's a small no cube. There's not much gammon threats. White has a bit of prime of its own. Great roll by Black. Steps all the way up, and that might have just been a market loss, pending on like a double threes or something like now that. Now he's got both five points. It's it's. Uh, yeah, this game's over. Very strong position. The only, the only thing I think about is whether it's too good or not, but I don't think it is. Still has an ace point anchor, some prime behind. Just a yeah. double pass, if you ask me. Yeah, double pass. He's got the anchor, so. Uh, I think the pass is very clear. White has a very long way to go before he wins this game. So just let Jerry get one point, come back to the next round. Yeah. Must have been a really big pass. A pass and move on. It's probably getting close to too good there. Probably about five millipoint errors. Not to catch that, I guess. Oh, the stream's loading. Hope it's not my Wi-Fi. Jerry's been a very strong player for, for a number of years. His PR is, is um, extremely low. Uh, yeah, 3.11 3 according to the BMAB site. Hold on, I have to check out for about three seconds. I fixed my internet connection. Okay. Okay. Just uh, regular uh, early game stuff. Um, nothing um, decisive here. He's got to hit two there. And if he doesn't roll a five or hit back, he's got to gonna have a strong advantage. Oh, very strong roll. Now for the last one, doesn't matter. I think he's just going to double. Next roll, unless he rolls double twos or something. 
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. 3 1. Looks like a cube. Yeah, sure. You can do this. That'd be a cube. Is there a take, Ryan? No, I don't think so. Yeah, Black has nothing going for him. He's behind in the race, behind in the blitz, behind in the prime. What does he have? He has nothing. This no game's over. There's 10 in the zone. Yeah. Good pass. 1-1. One, one. Two quick games. See how fast this match goes. Probably expected to slow down a little bit. Set in the more complicated positions. Their moves have been pretty automatic so far. <clears throat> okay, I think you slot to five point. Really? I, th I think pretty sure. Five, five point. <laughs> I'd be pretty confident. No, I don't think so. I'd be pretty confident about coming down to the nine and splitting there. But this 4 1 is definitely not correct. 4 1, usually the response after 6 1 opening is just to come down to the nine and split. But 2 1. This is not good for white. Now, I like making the anchor in a 23 point and just slotting, trying for something. Yeah, Black. if you do that, then, then you might have something. Yeah, you don't want to leave those checkers. You got no points. Yeah, a couple of blasts under your attack. You don't want to do this. It's too much uh, blitz value that he's opening up. Which is this is exactly what he's doing. He needs to get an anchor. Or else he's going to face a cube. No, oh, that's it. Too good. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, not with nine checkers in the zone. Right. You need one more check in the zone to be too good. I think it's closer to a take than it is too good. But it still looks like a pretty solid pass. Checker on the bar. Yeah, this, just, definite this, game, this is a definitely a pass. If uh, Black didn't have the five-point, like the three-point instead, it would be a take. But now with the five-point, beautiful rack formation, it doesn't look – It looks. He's got the priming game going, take. too, if he, if he can't blitz him. Yeah, exactly. If, if his rules dictate that, he can do the prime instead of the blitz. Uh, Jerry might have missed a cube before this roll, before the Thor 3. He had still nine in the zone threats to make the seven point. Probably a small no cube, but obviously that 4 3 fan is a huge market loss. Coming in to 6 5, Jerry keeps playing and the opening roll. for playing the, playing the 4 1 wrong. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. That was. I felt pretty strongly about making a 23 and just slotting. But that too. Yeah. Uh, this isn't right. It's, you're too far. You're not far enough behind. You don't want to split, I think. Just 21. It's close. Those, those opening posts. Oh, he's got to make it to five points. Oh, uh, um, five, yeah, five points is going to be correct. No, that was not. You, pr you probably saw just safety up the block, but obviously the five point and unstacking the six is too strong to pass up rather than making the seven. Probably about 150 blunder there. I have two needs to hit. Just come down, I guess. Yeah, come down. <clears throat> he wants a four. Ooh, great roll. Great okay, roll. So there's one, two, three, five. It's just down. And now he's looking to cube, pending with the races. Or you head yeah. by both. Black's, Jerry's got a strong position. What's the race, though? Oh, it's well, actually, actually double it five is um, tightened up, but. Um, uh, I actually think it's a cube. White's well, kind of out of time. He doesn't have any time. Yeah, I think so. If Black a makes a uh, four or five point, White's just going to. If you ask me, I say it's a double take. Threat's making the inner board points, the five and the four points. It's still a take as Black's, as of yet, has no inner board points. The race is probably close after White equals up with the double five. The take must be clear here, but the cube is probably small and you can find it. He's not going to. I'm interested to see if that was a cube or not. You play the last five here. Uh, you just play 11 6. You don't need this slot. Well, dupes the four. No, no, you're, you're way ahead in the race. It's not right to. It's just trying to bring the game home. There's really no need to slot. Just giving your opponents good fours. Yeah. Chance to get back into the game. Uh, six guys on, on the six point. Yeah, I, I, I do it too. This is what I do. So now White's obviously not going to split. Yeah, 6-2. If he saw like a 3 there, he might have been tempted to split the 21, just trying to advance anchor, but it's not right. Black has a very stacked formation. You want to 
Got to be singing about Dalma, yeah. Yeah, it's it a looks still like take. a take to me. It looks like an easy take. Black is all, all actually. Those... I think Black's worse here than he was last time. The double five. I mean, he gets I race value, that. but he loses a lot of his Does climbing that count? value. Diane Checker. Jer- Greg's probably gonna hope not. Double four is obviously. Basically it looks a like it on stack. That stack. It's that's. Really, I would make the five point all day long. Just clearing a thirteen while you're at it. Well, how about nine point and two point? That's another interesting play. But yeah, if you ask me, this is this will be my play. Just I'm going for the five points. I I like to unstack the stack. I've always said that. <laughs> it's a huge it's, stack there in the six point there. It's definitely reasonable. Just making the two inner board points. Aces, one, two, three, four. Oh, that's a good roll. Two down, obviously. Now, four, three is a winner. Yes, it is. Ooh, wrong seven. Yeah. So, six, one. There's a six. Just get it another comes over with the ace. Yeah, I think so. I think coming down to this one is probably better. Leaving the seven point slotted too. You do want to make that point. This is not good, but it just plays four and three completely safe. You don't need to break the 10 point here. You make that next time. The thing is, I don't think you leave a bot. No shots is the key here. <clears throat> White still has a decent game going, especially with the gap in the five point. It's not great for black. Well, it's, it's great, but it's not crushing, if I don't want to say. Lex is trying Lex. to clear a point with no shots. 2-1. Interesting. <laughs> I guess you have to clear it now. Leave the 4-5 shot. Everything yes. else is too ugly. Yeah. He's got three pieces of wood for the 5.2. Not that he needs it, but it's easier to clear the, the 6 and 7 points if you have the 5 point. Six four is actually really not good. If you want to roll low on that white crunch, now if white can roll small, six four is where it counts. You don't want to. Yeah, this is correct. You don't want to come off. They want to come out there. No, no, I don't think so. It just gives a good shot. Six, good sixes for no reason. Uh, indirect shot, but shot anyways. Now he's gonna come out double five. Lots of shots here. Here we Six, go. Five. Clear. Four one is great. What well, wants to get one out? Uh, I think it's over now. After he cleared a seven point, point, it's pretty well gin, especially with the gap on the six point. He needs a long, long way to win this game now. So four so three. Not, sure, why not? Going for it again. You, know, you got you got the old six five five. Um six five and five. Well, five four is not too bad. Six five is actually a double. But six five. five is horrible. Yeah. You don't you don't get that if you if you played it the other way last time. Six four. Much better than six five. Okay, this is it. If he doesn't get anything now, he's gotta run. If he can. There he goes. Okay. So 4 1. Jerry's getting uh, a 4 1 lead here. It's, um... <clears throat> I'm interested to see a double four. That's the one play I want to. And I also have the missed cube there. It's close, small cube, but I think he missed it. Before he rolled a double five, make three point. Well, he, he had no points. Yeah, but he had the threats of making the points. <clears throat> and he was still ahead in the race, I think. White only has an ace point game going. And I think when he rolled double fives, this should actually go out slightly worse. I think it's close. Usually when you're... Um, that game is an aggressive game. 
and you, you try to be aggressive and you it usually works for you <clears throat> playing not to lose is a bad strategy yeah it's the wrong way to play this game Especially early on, you whip that cube out there. And um, your opponent thinks twice about... Um, and yeah, maybe you get a pass future. out of him, which, which is obviously a great play if you're playing for PR, which these guys are not. A lot of opening six ones here. Yeah. Three, three, out of, three, out of, three out of four games, opening six one. Okay, or three... Night. Down and split to 21. Yeah, yeah I don't guys, think right. Usually they go 21, um, 9. Yeah, staying a bit out of the gun and it's, challenging it's the checker on the uh, – putting a checker in the 9 points, lock that are builder, and then the 10 point. 6-5, looks like it just swings from the 20 points. Yeah, this is right. What else are you supposed to do? Yeah, nothing else. Okay. Black's rolling along. Now you gotta make the bar. Yeah, I believe so. Black two. Blocking those sixes. There's a two six that's gonna jump out. Or maybe not. Maybe just step up. Yeah, step up and down is better. Step up and down is better. You don't need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too much. You're under attack there, but not it's not, it's not a big deal. That's why the checker on the nine points better than the ten point. He could have made it three point on his head, but now he can't. Now he's forced to jump out, I guess. Now he's probably forced to hit. If he hits really um, I would just run out depending what the race is. I guess he's gonna be down by about uh, he's gonna be down by a little bit. But even still, it's too strong a roll just to run out. You don't want to hit good a checker, a second checker sent back. Yeah, I have a very hard time playing a play like this. There's just not much blitzing value there. It's certainly not pressing the board advantage because <laughs> it's a disadvantage. Well, you prevented it from making the four point, you know, so there's that. If you can hit back here, it'll be big. He did. Yes. <clears throat> Three fours makes two points. Okay. White got lucky there. He made a bad play, I think, with the hit there. But he got bailed out by rolling well, as usually happens. Four five just saved the Zakai He's there. Not now if, he didn't, if um, Black doesn't roll a seven, certain sevens. Now he's just five. Five. You can make the ace point. What's yeah. the race? What's the race? Are you behind? If you're behind, you should make... Well, he's got 11 play. in the zone. Yeah, if you're behind, you should just play. If you were ahead, you should probably run. No, what do you no it's a long way from the cube yet. You got 11 in the zone. No, it's not enough. Well, There's only one checker. White has nothing. I think it's yeah, a Yeah, but the... No, I don't think it is. Not at the score. If this is 0-0, this is zero, zero, it'd still be a very clear take to me. So here, it's just not a cube yet. You have to make the four point first or make the three point or at least get a direct shot on the checker on the 10 point. But as of now, it's just not quite enough. He has a not really a good priming structure anymore with the make, made ace point. It's not really worth it just to cube. A lot of valuable recubes if he takes this. I'm doubling this all day long. And, um, and he might pass. No, you can't pass this. You're going to look at the 10 in the zone. It's such a clear points. take. There's only one checker on the roof. There's only oh. one checker, and you have solid prime structure of your own. It may be if you're, XG, if you're XG, but you're him. He might pass this. Come on, take it. He's got 11 in the zone. Yes. I mean, the race is probably close with two guys versus one guy back. I don't know exactly what it is, but it seems close. 
I got 21 pips. Black's up 21 pips. Okay, if it's up 21 pips, it might have been a solid cube then. I was close kind of real that. fast. Yeah, okay. But I don't know how long this is going to last, so I kind of real fast. But it, it, it still has to be, be wrong a little bit, but it's, it's pretty big. If it's 21 pips, it, it could be a cube then. Just looking at it, if thought the race was close. Yeah. But you could be right. But it's still a clear take, in my opinion. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not 21 pips. What the heck? 20. Yeah. Yeah, 21 bits. Passed it. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Commons, if you got a scary position sometimes, if you don't think it's a double, it seems um, might not be a double, but if you think he might pass, it's for the shot. Yeah, I think you bluffed him there, to be honest. Up, down 4 1 to 11. I can never pass a cube like that. It's just way too well, to play four, in the game. So. 4 1 is still pretty early. It's, it's not desperate times yet. It's, no, uh, but th that wasn't a desperate position, though. You guys still had a very solid game going. Five two makes to three point. Unfortunately, he wants to say better than that, but there's nothing builders, there. Nice builders for the five and got to make to three point. <laughs> I know that sucks. <clears throat> so now White wants to hit with something, anything. Two, please. Five three. Five, three. This is that's terrible. terrible. Just so three is clear. Three is to eleven eight. Five. There's no mm -hmm. point hitting. Is there just? And yeah. there might be a point hitting, taking away the tempo, but I think I just do this. I agree. Make an anchor here. Yeah. Jerry's rolling right along. Yeah, Jerry has easy positions. Two five split. It's kind of split. Yeah, split is blown off the spare. Five I, I not so much. Three points that are blown off the spare. You don't really like stripping the midpoint, but you don't really want to go to the three point either. It must be close. I would just come down, but you can do this, sure. Yeah, both plays are not good, but now looks like the five point. Maybe. Five You're ahead in the race. You can make the ten point, but it must just pale in comparison to the five point, I guess. Five points is usually very strong. Yeah. It's um, almost always right to make the five point. Almost. Yeah, I like this play. We don't want to leave a shot. I'm not sure. I could see myself the other play being correct. Just the five point is always so strong. Two three is terrible. You must just play. No, no you don't. Okay, yeah, you have to do this. Sorry. Maybe six three with better and leaving the six shot. Now here again, uh, maybe slot to five point. Is one block making the five points two blocks? So yeah, I would just make it. Right. I think. Actually, no, because you don't. You want to use those checkers on the six point. I like this play. I do like this play. You yeah. want to use the checkers on the six point rather than to make it rather than blowing up your other points. You this have. is a very good roll for white. So it was two better, there, obviously, but um, this is very good. Safetying up. Safe, safe up the blast. Can't afford to be hit right now. So if one's going to make it. Sure, you can do like this. Why not? You, you got to do that. I was considering running off the anchor already, but it's just a little bit well, too this much. Is a terrible. Wow, roll. that's a bad roll. And I can start thinking about a cube already, believe it or not. Just prime is different. Now, white's this... going to be way up in the race, or at least up in the race. And uh, black's <laughs> got to think about doubling. Yeah, it's not a double yet. You got to make the seven point first. Usually three point games are either small passes or small takes. It's it's right on the border. Yeah, you want a five prime first though. It, it kind of depends if you um, have a four or a five prime. How about the slot there? No, uh, that was too much. Four prime is, has a lot to do with the race. Three, two. Three. None stack. There we go. I'm gonna stack that. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, got now, you, now you run out with two, maybe. Your rolls a six. Uh, I do like no, that. No, just stay back there. Okay, yeah, you can do like this. Sorry. That's it's reasonable. only a six four, and then you get an eight shot if you rolls it. So like five eight. one, it's not good. Chuck it to the two point. Yeah, that's true. Black's got to th be thinking about doubling here. Not yet. What's the race? Must was still way behind. Okay, now I don't think you want to leave. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe jumping out was better. Jumping out, making the two points. I'm trying to find plays that that are better than this, but with two blocks, right, we got a four. The license to come off. Four three, you gotta jump out. It looks like. Just go all the way, maybe. Playing oh, eight one doesn't seem best, but how about jumping out, and making, the, making a two point? What's the race? You know, that's what right? matters. You got, here. you got eleven or thirteen numbers to hit back, and if you hit back, you got the two blasts over there. What's the race? You didn't even count it. Or you probably did. Um, it's just a lot faster than, it, than I am. White's White's got to be ahead in the race. Yeah, then it's just, just by a general look. It doesn't look like a cube of five one. Well, you can't hit and cover. That was a uh, not a good rule for <clears throat> for black. White's hoping, desperately hoping to leap. Can't double. I really, I don't know why. I really want to jump off that anchor there with two blocks inside the inner board. You got out. There you got it all the way. Uh, what about yeah. coming out with those two blocks? I, I know. I've, I've wanted to come out for a number of rules now, but Jerry keeps not doing it. He could pro he's probably right, considering he's a little bit better player than I am. But jumping out is very reasonable. Just, so what's just, the race here? You know, we got to count? Yeah, I'll count white. You count the black guys? Okay. Eight, eight, eight. 97. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not slower than you are. I got 89. I could be wrong. So eight pips. Yeah. It's not a cube yet. You got a safety one, those stickers. You got stacks of the three points. Easy, easy take. take. Very, Very easy. easy. Yeah, it was leads me to believe it's not quite a double yet. But he wants to get back into the game. Considering yeah, he's trying to do something for something. Yeah, I think he sees that he's trailing by a lot, but there's just not much points considering. There's a very completely timeless like position. You know, when you button up, it's great for not leaving shots, but it's not so hot for um, coming home safely. Yeah, I don't like it. I would have just I made the two, two points. Two. Yeah. Oh, well, if you're all doubles, it's, it's a lot easier coming home safely like that. That works. So there's two to 12. You need a little black. So Yeah, I like this. Trying to make them crunch. Double ones is very strong. You know, the double threes put him up in the race, too, so followed by double aces. Okay, this should be an easy roll home for white. Firing big doubles. Two breaks, fortunately for him. You got a break from the back. That works. <clears throat> that works. So it's going to be 5-3. Just run out. Again. We've entered a nine-point match now. Okay, so White's not an empty chair. Putting up a little fight. Hopefully, if he doesn't. Six one. No, not such luck. Might as well start resigning. Well, That's you know, true. hey, you might as well play till the end. But it's pretty well. Might as well play to the end. You can always um, let the dice decide. Yeah, of course you can do that, but it's it's pretty well. Done Some people now. stop and think for a while, and that slows the game down when you stop and yeah. think for a while. Resigning. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Great. 
versus one, two. Oh, it's, still, it's still possible. Oh, yeah. Easily. He's two one, sets. Two, three. Just two sets away. No, it's a, uh, a big one. one, two, three versus one. No, I think it's over. Actually, no, it's not. No, 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 no. You can still roll two sets and something else. You still do two sets now. Yeah. When does that ever happen live? It happens a lot online. You hear everybody talk about that. The backgammon galaxy rigs dice. <laughs> Poor uh, Mark uh, Olson is not too happy about that, but what are you going to do? The old online argument is that, um, yeah, is why would why would you favor one guy over the other? Yeah, it makes no sense. People yeah, that complain sense. about rigged dice, no offense, but I lose respect for you. <laughs> okay, tighten up a little bit. Five three. It's um, the play is normal play now. It's normal match Two play. Two one slot. Uh, you're behind. No um, score moves, at least. Well, a little bit, least, but not, not as much as it was last time. At least not before the cubes turned to two, anyways. <clears throat> okay, we're grateful to have the USBGF uh, sponsor this tournament and um, uh, for the stream, and, and um, happy to be here. Yeah, me too. Always thankful that USBGF port two is going to hit. It's fine. He wants an anchor or another hit. Do a great roll. But yeah, double threes works. Makes a five point. And it works really well. You know, keep the eight point. Don't leave plays the button it, on the eight point. Plays itself, really. Yeah. Points are points, whether it's 8, 10, 11 points. People underrate them, but um, they're, they're still points. Not quite as effective as inner board points, outer board points, but I want to keep those. <clears throat> Another boring holding game coming right up. 6 1 to completely equalize. Well, that four is there. interesting. That's actually that's, that's, that's not a good roll, is it? You have to probably play the two point. There. Yeah, that's it. That's really ugly. If you come down thirteen nine, you're stripping the point, leaving more shots, and just not unstacking. Two six. You don't want to leave taking the pressure off the that guy. So yes, this this looks good in the wall. Five four is a nice roll, actually. Yeah. You don't want to go to the ace point, so you made the uh, right. No, you don't do that. You want to run out with sixes now. Two five is not going to do it. I guess it must come down and probably step up. Yeah. The other play is making the three point, but the eight point is a nice point to have. You don't really want to break that point now. And the eight point stronger than the three point now with the twenty one point anchor. Three points of blitzing point. 21 point kills all your blitz value, so it's counterintuitive, so counterproductive. 4 1, I guess you just got a hit. Prevent White from making those inner board points with all those stacks he's got. I agree with that. Everything else is um, not good. A lot of times that's the criteria. The nice other three. Thing, not good. <clears throat> Two twos. So one up, make the 11, seems reasonable. That's Let's a strong play. move. People in the past never used to make that move like that. Why um, not? Because they would value the midpoint. They go, oh, can't break the midpoint. We've got to keep that midpoint. You know, it's a midpoint phobia. So what, what would they do, though? They'd do something else, like 24-22 um, and 8-6, eight, eight. something like that. But this is a very strong play. And... Um, you can't be um, thinking about a cube now. There's not enough. Now you can make the three point. Yeah, and I can. Now you must. Or come out. No, you can't make the three point. It's very nice to unstack. Well, that's got a little things. precarious position here. He really needs a spring guy. Actually, coming out is reasonable. You're right. That's not a terrible play. Interesting. Let's see. You're going to be 
race is probably close. So if you make a point, though, when Black tries to run, he'll have a better board. Yeah, I think he changed my mind. I think this was the best play, just going for some outfield that's control. Good, that's, that's a nice roll. If you gave up the midpoint, the um, <clears throat> bar point is a good backup. So two safeties, four displays behind it at two point, it looks like. That's it. There's um, nothing else. You can't make the 11 put in. This is an easy decision game, good for both players' error rates. Okay, now so you this got play to... happens. Now you got to run off at least one guy, probably both guys. I like that play. Just jumping off. Yeah, no, no, no. I would never, ever do this. You don't want to break the 11 point. You want to, You can't afford to keep both those anchors for too much longer. So might as well break it now you, you when White still has. Point. Yeah, break the 21 point. point. Come out with two from 21 point would be it would have been my play there. Now, see, I would have I would have started the five and started the ace, and I would have got hit with, with that seven. So that wouldn't have been good. My play would have been punished. It wouldn't have hit in the nine and make the. So Jerry's play was not punished. How about that? Yeah, must have been right then. <laughs> so two is clear, two is five, three. And now, now you see the problem. You got to run off or else you're going to start burying. But White's improved his board now, so it's a little bit scarier to do that. And I, don't, I have no idea if 21-15 is right anymore. That looks like the right play to me. Everything else, you I got think that so too. In the inner, inner board and you can't leave. If you break the Ooh, it's five point, you're leaving sixes and aces. He's going to think about a double. I don't see why not. You're, just think about it. If it's a cube, it's not a question. You're definitely a big favorite in this game. I think it's a double. Yeah, I think so, too. Especially with the and third now, checker on, on the deuce point. Black's got, um, you know, four, three and a two point. Yeah, that's very young. He's got young. that alone. At, um... Except this is a bad roll. Got to jump out. Black's got to jump. squeeze. He's got to get off something here. If it's not too bad. Yeah, that's what Boy, it. oh, this is, it's. Sorry. I just get off. To, yeah, that's it. You gotta, yeah, this is a good point. <clears throat> I definitely double this. What's the race yeah. now? You must be way ahead of White, no? Four checkers back versus two. White's got to be ahead. Yeah, so that's good. It's probably pretty close. I, I double that. Oh, my God. I'm with you. Double six is going to work. It's going to hit. Him. Where's the other one? On the nine point. Well, like, or it can make the ace point. Okay, to make the ace seems very reasonable. This play is also, I'm not sure. Maybe this one was better. Yeah. Okay, now you got this. I'm still yeah. done with this. Yeah, I think you're right. I will be cubing this. Threes are huge. I mean, black position Double is just four, so it's just so ugly. Black position, the three on the deuce point. Whenever you see that, you always gotta start thinking about the cube. Always, it's like a red flag. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Black's gonna have a hard time putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. I think it's the past, to be honest. You're a fire three in sort score consideration on that one. No. Except for, so except for going to be a very, except you're going to be a little bit uh, like easier to pass. It's going to be a little bit more of a pass than this for money. Race. Yeah, good. So five four. Seems like an easy pass. He probably lost his market there, like Frank said. Okay. Well, he's tightened it up a little bit, and I made a match out of it. Before it was just um. And Relin, it's one nothing to eleven now. Six four, falling four three is just a run. I don't know if he knows this. Yeah, this is wrong. You want to run all the way. Six three makes the seven point. That's not good. You want to make an interboard point, but that's you can do with the seven. Can you tell us who these spots are, please? <clears throat> this 
six just, five runs off of thirteen. Just gonna run. Twenty four. Oh. Sorry, runs two thirteen from twenty four. That's a hitter. The two points looks better when Black's in the air. <laughs> oh, a lot better when Black's in the air. Two it's six on the bar. Not a double yet. Not enough it's threats. Definitely not a double. You got two bats out there. It's getting close. But I'll tell you what he is, though, is he's a favorite. And being yes. a favorite's always strong. Oh, that is an early double. Easy take for Jerry. So you have, doesn't you have to think about it? One and four, buckle. Buckle. easy play, easy play. Two six again. Oh, okay. And then now we could. Now would have been a double, and it's still a take. Yeah. And so last time it just wasn't a cube. Two one. You don't want to make the seven. I don't like this play. You want to bring another checker down for the blitz. This will be well, my two play. Down. Two down and in the eight nine eight. Yeah, clean up the – just have one blind there, two down. Or down, bring a two down and then clean up the pot. Yeah, there we go. That's it. The thing you don't want to do is have, have a stripped eight point, thinking you got three builders. Then it, when it comes time to make a point, you got to break the eight point and leave shots. <clears throat> Three, five comes in there, goes in there. Now it's 50-50 again, even though white – that is both his checkers. Four. This looks like two breaking that. Yeah, that one. Leaving some indirects. So five three makes the point. Gotta make the five point here. He has made the bar in the past and no shots. But yeah, five, five, five point has to be usually correct now. No six for a great roll by Jerry. Yeah, evens it up. To make that point, I'd probably go to the ace point. No, I don't like Jerry. that. I don't want to make that point. I would just play five and six three. Like this, yeah. Making that point, it's a little bit too strippy, strippy, so it's not. We have to break the next point anyway. Okay. All right, just bring him closer. Yep. <clears throat> no need to make a point when you're ahead. You just want to bring your checkers home safely. This looks like the right play. Blacks patiently building his board, hoping for a shot. 2 1. Okay, this is interesting. A little bit of a four race point. flexible play. No, this is not right. You, this is too inflexible. You want to, you don't care about leaving inner board blots. You want what you want to do is maximize your race efficiency, and this play doesn't do it. So, for something like Six to four and two to one would have been a better play than this one here. As a matter of fact, it, it puts you down in the race when you do stuff like that. It, it hurts your race. <clears throat> okay, break the Double deuces. And down more there. Crossovers. Goes there into the six over. point. Six point has to be better, I think. Just because yeah. you have race as well as black. We're looking at crossovers. And Five one breaks to nine point. It breaks a nice point in a, in a very nice way by sliding the four point. <clears throat> that looks um, automatic. Don't have too many crossovers right now. Wow, double fours is pretty well gin now. All the way. Yes, yeah. this is correct. The only shots is no shots, so you're fine. Five three, probably just come off the anchor, I guess. Sure, why not? Nothing to play for there. So the one point is better than going to eight seven. Or this. No, I would yeah, this is reasonable. I probably just went to the one point there. 
always decent to have at least one checker there. Just bring them in and get them off. <clears throat> and Greg's going to take the lead in this match, pending a miracle from Jerry for the first time since the beginning. Wow. He sure will. You know, backgammon, there's a lot of ebb and flow in backgammon. just goes back and forth. And you got to understand that. I would I would have come to the, probably did a four point. Okay, double fives means it's over. All right, silver. Okay. Hey, Ryan, do you know who our sponsors are for this streaming? I have to say I do not. That's why I did not do that. <clears throat> But I have to thank Michelle or Antoinette Williams for setting up the commentary again. Obviously, Michael and April Messick for doing another fantastic production stream. Yeah, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. Exactly. The audience wouldn't be here. Okay, just rolling it in now. <clears throat> We'll have a six to five lead. Five away, six away. Two, one to seven now, which means uh, Jerry's going to start being a little bit more aggressive than he was before. What's a small no double for money is now going to be a small cube at the score. And Greg's going to, likewise, Greg's going to have to pass a little bit more and let it go to two, two rather than risking losing a gamma and then Jerry going to two away. With all this stuff, just keep rolling. Unless you're absolutely sure it's over, just keep rolling. Don't even think about it. Just roll. Because <clears throat> you never know. <laughs> okay, a new match. New match, six to five. Uh, before it, the way I do it is at, before at the start of every game, you should look at the score and see the uh, score tactics that are involved. Probably well, gonna take a break, probably about five ten minutes. So I guess we'll take a break as well. Okay. See you back in about five minutes.
Who was Jared's opponent again? So these guys are ready to go again. Let's they're just coming minutes. off break. And um, breaks are usually five minutes long. Um, they try not to be too much longer. Some people take longer, but they usually tell you ahead of time. They're going to take long, longer. <clears throat> okay, up and down, standard procedures. Meanwhile, down and up. Standard procedure. Up and down, followed by down and up. It's usually the play. There you go. I remember that. Up and down. Oh, good roll by Jerry. Great roll. You got any Cuban carry pending a four That's point make guys. or an anchor make. He's almost at a double down. With, um, white he roll will there. be considering the white roll. Having like a like this is not a cube. That's a nice roll. But yeah, making the bar stayed off the cube, so. 6-3 makes it seven points. Ooh. Very nice. Now he's close to a double again. But Considering, okay, this is a run all the way to 11 point. And what's the race now? Yeah, this is not a cube yet. Not enough. Not yet. Really. White, white's got enough to stave off the cube. Yeah, he has. So five one down to the five is easy. The one's a little bit harder. Either do the seven point and just flexing your builders or stepping out trying to jump out with sixes. I like this, yeah, I, I think. It. It's, it it's better for building. Both plays must be pretty close. Two sixes is great, just runs out all the way. Everything else must be a blunder. I agree. <clears throat> so one, two. Yes. Step up to no, 21 he's... and 20. No, I, he's... Think. I think you got to put him up there on the 20 point. Force the issue. Yeah, I like stepping up with two guys. I do like this play. Just stepping up with both guys, trying to make the advanced anchor. No. Yeah, White can hide now. And if he gets pointed on, there's still blots out there. 6-3 <clears throat> is going to either make the 10 point, which seems Well, we would have got pointed on there. You want to make the 10 point. It's not going to be better than making the five. 10 point leaves a couple of fly shots, three, six. Yeah, but making the five leaves a direct shot, right. and it's very stacky, stacky for your structure. Whereas you make the five point, you're leaving a lot more numbers, uh, 14 numbers. So Black has a better board. You want to get your checkers home. It must be a blender to make the five point. And then and this, this is even a nice blinding point. Pressure if he doesn't anchor. White yeah. six. Okay, so there's the anchor. There's the seven points. What's the race? Gets her counting it. I'm not sure what it is. If this is make a builder on the bar and you know. no, I would have went to the one point, unstack the six yeah. point, leaving yes. more builders for the five point on the eight. Right. You stripped the builder there, not good. Jerry's. Quietly making his board or preparing he's to gonna, make his board. Yeah, he's going to count the race. If he's ahead by probably about 15 pips, he'll find a cube. Anything less than that, it's not worth it. Looks like an easy take for black. 
Oh, as soon as you take, the question is whether it's a cube or not. You don't even need to count the real as it's a take. Yep. But you do have to count in order for the cube or not. So it's uh, 20, 36. Uh, started counting too late. I don't okay. know what the gun is. So 5-1... Looks like it does this. Yeah, this is a fine play. When this stuff happens, you start blowing your ace lead. <laughs> is what's going on when you're dumping checkers on your ace and two points. Well, not yet. If you only have one guy there, it's fine. It's when you get start getting three or four and it starts killing your ace lead. But that, um, so now you can either break the 10 point or break the third. No, 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 no. You don't want to do this. No, you break the 13 point and leave a 6 1 5 2. Could have done that, or you could play completely safe of breaking the. Uh, there's a six one out with ten. Point. Okay, you know he makes the ace point. There's a. Okay, now he comes. Now he breaks I, the thirteen point. Now he can do two down. Now they leave that six one five two. Okay, he rolled it before. He's gonna roll it again. Nice. Oh, he did it again. <laughs> It was not to be. That was too good. No need to roll yet. I believe it's too good too. That blind two point, only a two point board. It's it's. I'm rolling out. When you're playing for error rates, you really want to find two good double positions Ooh. because it's just easy decisions for you here on out, and your opponent gets nothing while he's on the roof. So it just lowers your PR immensely. Well, it does nothing for your opponent. That's sub six is not a good roll. What are you doing next time if he doesn't come in? I'm not sure. It's closer. I think it's still too good, but it's definitely closer than it was before. Six is. Three, two. You can just leave a two, five. Trying to maximize builders for the two point. How about no, seven, two, four? Six. Yeah, I like this. I like this. Leave it two, six. Yeah, it makes six is good. Or some six okay. is good. Rather than five is good. Fives are already good to come out. I still roll. There's a 3-2. Ooh, yes. 1-5. to five. Not there. That's actually oh, a shot. Leaves a point. Or breaks a point. Lose a shot. Now, if he stands. Okay, what about now? Now, it now you got to roll. Be, you got to yeah, double. I, yeah, you got to double. Cute. Easy pass. Hey. Oh, I didn't know what he was doing. I thought. <laughs> yeah. Weird two patterns from taking. Fred there. He's going to take him and he can pass. Jerry's got the lead again. <laughs> if I had to bet, I'd say he was going to take it and then realize mid cube handle that it was a pass. So, did you know the count when he doubled? In the, when no, Fred no, I don't, I, don't, I don't know the count. The chat will tell you, though. Momentum's a strange thing in backgammon. You have it and you don't, you don't know when it's coming or going. <clears throat> so four, two, three, one. Oh wow, Jerry seven six. I mean, he has to be very aggressive on Gammon's positions. He wants to win. So four one, you're gonna be ahead by a little bit. You might as well split. Not to okay, this is reasonable. I probably would have come to 23 and down though. Unstacking seems very nice. Yeah, I, I usually don't do that. Now you gotta hit and bring one down. Sure, he got what he wanted. Another guy back. Four, six hits. Got to go for him. Jerry's got a strong position now. If he can hit back, it's huge. Two, six comes there, jumps out. Yeah, got to come in and hit back. Plays itself. Now he really wants a one. There's a one. And stays there. Yeah, you want to stay there. You want to make the 21 point. Coming down is very nice. It's adding another nice checker to the zone. Yeah. Jumping out just need to do that. Okay. 
come up. Stepping up. Them. Yeah, stepping up linking them is the best play there. Lincoln fours and sixes out. And a fan. It looks like a cube. Not a fan. Comes in and hits. You got to hit. You got to try to go after that blind on the on the nine point. <clears throat> well. Oops. I would play down. Yeah, I would play down. You want to keep those guys linked. The guy in the 14 point doesn't really do much. The it's guy in the 11 point do does a lot. And he doesn't want to get hit. Either way, this looks like a cube now. Maybe. You can Definitely do that. Split. Thinking about it. Especially at the score, you think about it. Some people would have thought about a bad game and went 8-7. That was the wrong idea. Black doesn't have um, a bunch of builders to go after you on the lower points. So. This is wrong. This is very wrong. You want to play down to the eight points. Not the, and that's not very wrong, but it's it's a mistake. I'm pretty confident on that. Well, you want to play 13-8 instead of the 14-6. It's a lot of outside numbers. It's okay. Sorry. Now you can start thinking about a cube again. You know, White's got a great board, great position. Yeah, but he still has four checkers back, and it's a lot of gamut here. You got to hit on the bar, I think. I don't hate this play, to be honest. Kept it going. But, yeah, I would have hit. I See, definitely would have hit. Now White's got – White's made the bar because Black didn't hit him. Wow, that's a terrible rule. Oh, this is – yeah. There we go. Yeah. He gets punished for a 6-3 play. Yes, he does. Well, I probably would have done that anyways. No, he wouldn't have had the bar. Yeah. That brings two down, I guess. <clears throat> the thing about running out? No, you want to stay there. I don't think about this doing doing this either is way too deep. You want to play as pure as possible in the semi back game that you're in. And this so the next point you want to break is the um, 13 the point. point. Yeah, you should have done it last time, if you ask me. Well, I think you can break the, one of the lower points down there, 23 or bar. I think I'm breaking the bar here. Really? I'm going to keep that presence out there. What is wrong with two down? You're running out of time. You're gonna you're gonna run a black scott um five guys in the midpoint. And he's he's gonna do stuff like this. I would have played two down and probably a RP to be honest. So sure, why not? You're gonna spread them around. Boy wants to spread them around and make those points. Okay, you gotta break the eight. Yep, so looks break like the eight time. Don't get doing anything fancy there. Leaving shots or anything like that. Can't be right. I have a very hard time. Right? Cover numbers. This has to be, that had to be a mistake. <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, I'm pretty sure you missed the cube earlier this game too. What's that? Is that a 2-1? Two one hits. This looks like nice. a hit to me. Black's nice got that blood over there in his home board. Wow, double ones is Oh, this is a great number for Jerry. There's three. He doesn't necessarily need to come up. Yeah, but he, doesn't he doesn't necessarily need to make the bar either. I think well, I would block control there. in case he gets gets one hit on the east point. Okay, how about this now? This is a pass. Is it a cube or is it too good? I think it's probably just a double and a pass. Oh, you could take a roll, can't you? I, I, I have no idea. Roll. Okay, he's gonna take a roll and he's gonna get rewarded for it. Well, there's not much downside right away with two on the bar. Yeah, but the six is downside was paid. not covering the ace and getting hit on the ace. That was basically the downside, or the most likely downside. So now we're just going to ro keep rolling. 
Come off with the yanks. Make sure you don't get uh, squeezed. There's and a lot of backgammons here. If you can keep them three on the roof and bring all the checkers around. Yeah, breaking your midpoint and leaving lots of blats. The problem with that is he rolls double threes and gets hit. Uh, you want you shouldn't be worried about double threes now. Can't see ghosts like that. So end at a six, down to eleven. Someone like four and avoiding double three disaster. It's just you can't really see ghosts in this game in back game. I mean, I play to the probabilities. So six, and why not just leave it there? Okay, trying for another guy. Yeah, BGs are big. That's over now, or that that other blats over now. Should say BGs still front and center. What are the chances of BGs here? Probably about seven percent. Okay. I I'm probably wrong. I'm not good at estimating the type of. Uh, the percentages that's terrible and that now it's a lot lower than seven percent yeah he's got more chances to come in and get a shot and sometimes that shot's a double shot but he's got to come in with um two at least two for that to happen such a nice position it's coming down to kind of strippy Oh, here it is. If he leaves a shot, it might be a double. 6-3. 5-3 is a shot. This is not a cube. You can't be cubing this, because if you cube oh, no. and, you, and, you, and you miss, you just lose. Would, did Jerry have a cube last time? No, it's too good. Missed it. Oh, jeez. Well, we got to be thinking about getting out the PG. Uh, he's got no, nobody out there, I guess. There's one, and this safety them all up. You're going to win a gammon anyway, I think. And there's not many BGs anymore. Not everybody's in. So just play like this and hope to win and win the gammon. Pretty much genuine when you do this. And if you don't do that, and, and you leave the shot, get hit, you can lose the game. Easy. Usually the criteria is you look at it and see if um, you're close. You're close. If you're close to the gammon, then make the aggressive play. But that's when the other guy has the cube. When you have the cube, you can always double them out. Unless you get hit early on. Okay, we seem to have a little uh, technical trouble here. Yeah, me too. So we're not seeing the rolls. It's okay. It will act it as if it's a gammon for uh, for Jerry, which puts him at two away, five away, which is a very interesting score because actually the person who's trailing has a higher take point than Jerry. So two away, five away. A little bit of a trouble. It's about 25, 25 and a half percent from the trailer. Technical difficulty. Stay tuned. Stay We're running just running out here. Well, it's, there's good news that it's raining outside because I'm technically missing one of my commitments here at the first week of university in order to do this commentary. So, but it's raining, so now they can't have that anymore. So, backgammon all day, baby. Well, thanks a lot. It's real sunny and beautiful out here in Michigan.
Okay. Okay, we should be up in a minute or two with the live stream. Um, anyway, if he if he didn't know about the score of two away, five away, the person who's two away, as in who has nine to eleven, can actually take in a completely gammaless position up until seventeen and a half percent, which means even if uh, the trailer who's five away has over eighty percent wins, it's not necessarily a pass in a completely gammaless position. Obviously, when there's gammons involved, that changes. But just in races or holding games, you could take a lot more. And actually, the person who's trailing has a higher take point because that's still like for money about 77, 78 percent. Well, that's what the opponent has. So that's still a take. So if you didn't know that, now you do. Yeah, it's weird. The trailer has a um, lower, higher take point at two way, five ways. It's weird little things like that that um, you should know. Um, it, it, it helps you um, when you know those, those weird ones. Um. <clears throat> know the anomalies. When's the last time Jerry's won an ABT event? Do you know, right? He's never won. He's never won. Jerry said, although he's a super grandmaster playing at an exceptional level, he's never actually won one of these ABT tournaments. Okay. So he's very happy to be in the finals. I don't think Greg has won one either. No, so. this is Greg's first open event. Oh, first okay. Ever. I won my first open event in Denver online. That was fun. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I went like there was like a more Swiss event. I went like 11 and 0, just dominated everybody. That was still one of my PRs, about four and a half, bringing that down low as it gotten better. How's That's Greg's PR? Learn. Greg's PR, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is considering it's first open event. If I had to guess based on just this match here, I'd say probably about seven and a half. Okay. A lot of people can play well, but when the pressure comes on, you know, when you get down to the later rounds, it takes a toll. Yeah, I had for that, that that was what cost me in Marbella there. I went to Marbella for the UBC Contender Tournament. Mm -hmm. I was expecting, because online I play under three all the time. That's like my average, about 2.6, 2.7. But in Marbella, it's like my first live tournament pretty much ever. The last tournament I've been to was Boston 2019 when I still played intermediate level. So it's just completely different factors went into that and it cost me to have a higher PR than I normally do. So about 3.8, still pretty disappointed about that. Well, I embarrassed myself. Well, then you got um, you got the fact that you, when you're in the finals, it's, it's kind of hard to sleep the night before. Yeah, 100%. 100%. The pressure is on. You're all excited. And, and These guys are playing a lot of backgammon in, uh, in very few days, which makes it makes you burnt out. Okay, the players looks like they're taking a break right now, um, and that gives us a chance to to uh, fix our technical problems. So stay tuned. Um, we'll we'll be back um, sh shortly. <clears throat> Frank, where are you on the uh, BMAB list? Um, PRs. Yeah, I I haven't checked uh, lately. I'm I'm usually in the mid four or something like that. Mm. It um, I just got my officially on the list just this week, so officially a grandmaster now. Even though it's well, G3. good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. That's um, youngest that's grandmaster ever. Old. Apparently, no one's that's ever done it at the age of nineteen. 19? Yeah. Okay. Well, Baggam is having a lot of trouble uh, attracting younger audiences and younger well, hope, players. Ho hopefully, they'll see me play this game and like it. So, showing okay. themselves. Who knows? But there's me. There's Benyek now. There's a. Uh, you got some friends? About 26. You got some uh, friends I, in your area? I wouldn't say we're friends, but me and Benyek, we met in Spain just a couple of last month. Okay. And I actually beat him on the big live stream, which is cool. 
obviously number one versus number two on Backhammon Galaxy. Okay. You're what, what are you on Galaxy? You're number one. Uh, number two. Number two. The next number right. one. Oh, good for you. Technical difficulties. Well, Greg's first open event is in the finals. Yeah, very Jerry, impressive. Jerry has been a, had a very impressive PR for quite a while. He doesn't go to many tournaments. He, I know. You know, he's got a job, full time job. He has a life outside of backgammon, <laughs> and he so he doesn't get to too many tournaments, so he doesn't have very many chances to win. Yeah, that's the problem. Everybody's inviting me to all these places now, like LA, Florida, for the, something. I, I just don't have the time to get down there, so I pick the tournaments when I can. I'm already deciding to go to New York this year, so hopefully, to see you guys there. New York's right when I have a, in between semesters in university, which should be pretty cool. And oh, then obviously. So you're in college too, huh? Yeah, college, yeah. You're in Canada, we call it university. University, okay. Yeah. Looks like we're coming up shortly. Hopefully. <clears throat> Oh, we're not live. Oh, okay. I thought we were, I thought we were live the whole time. Okay. I'm I'm sorry, what are you doing, Mike? Oh, click it. I see. <clears throat> okay. I'm in, Mike. Can you send it on my email again? Okay, how do I do that? Yes. So is hang on, it's youtube.com slash something. Okay, slash what are the codes? Okay, watch.tv. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay, I'm I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I got it. Thanks. Oh, uh, I got some in-depth fantasy football treats.
Welcome okay. back. We finally got um, the tech difficulties worked out. And we're just about ready to go here. Ready to finish this game. Jerry's got a commanding five to, uh, two-way, five-way lead. And once again, Jerry only needs, only needs to win one game. So if he wins this game, he wins his first official ABT tournament. Wins the match. If he wins the wins match. Wins the match. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, Greg's putting up a fight here. Double six is four down. Yeah, I'm making the two points just not right. No blocks. Now, White's got to watch out. Doesn't want to split and be subjected to those 12 guys coming down on his head. 6-3 runs out. And a miss. You could actually, believe it or not, start thinking about a cube because he's ahead in the race by probably about 20 pips. I would leave that guy there. I wouldn't care if I got hit with an ace. He's got a lot yeah, of good... it's not a cube yet. Okay, this makes points. the five points. Where's your one after you clean it up? Yes. And now after... If you left that point. guy there, you would have had a shot at him. Or okay, this is this is a double now. I would be cubing this. And if he, if he splits, it's too good. Now it's just a double and probably a pass, I think. You're passing at this score? I believe so. I mean, how much? How many wins do you think White has here? It can't be much. He has an ace point against a four prime. That's about to go more. You're gonna you're gonna make a five prime here and leave two. No, prime? no, I would do this play. Yeah, a two and ten, two. Ten and three. White's desperately seeking threes. Calling all threes. Jerry's got him. <clears throat> oh, he got it. Yeah. Now you're going to split with the last one? I think so. Trying to get out. Yeah. Now it's obviously not a cube. There's equal board, so it's okay to split. Especially when Jerry's in the air. Got to come up right there. And take the pounding. So if he wants a pointing number, just like that, that works. That's well. a great pointing number. Works really well. I don't think he sees it right away. He'll he'll see it. Jerry needs that deuce. By the way, yeah, but it's but still, see if it's you not... come up with a two or the three, you still got to need fives to come out. So it's, it's all tricky. So now you're obviously not going to make the anchor and keep them like this seems to be fine. It diversifies your get get up and out numbers. There's well. This is two. Oh, great number by Jerry. That was too good for Jerry. Give me one sec. Okay, you can't point on him. You point on him, then I'll fan, you know, chances are Jerry's going to fan, 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 and then. Jerry needs him to break. Or um, Greg needs him to break. And um, it's pretty bad right now. Jerry's probably got to gotta roll on, at least one roll. When you roll on for a gammon, every roll is a new decision. So he has to roll on. The key, the key here is for white not to hit. White does not need to hit. Just probably play. Uh, 13 4. This is the wrong idea. Very wrong idea. Jerry can uh, just roll on all day now. Yeah. That's it. 10 6 at least. Still many games here. Penning doesn't anchor up on 23 points. Jerry's a big favorite here to, uh, well, he's going to win the game most likely, but uh, Gammons are um, 
pretty big. Six five. She goes like it's ten five. Ring yeah, one he, he, hit he, another one. No, I don't think I don't think it's wrong. It's a five point board. Yeah. Still too good with three guys back. Four is gonna hit. Now you can play the um the old squeeze play. Is a squeeze play time? Oh, you can do that. Time? You're right. This is not right. I think I like your play. Um, I'm not sure. I think either hitting. Well, there's when you do the squeeze play, you got to figure out if it's a four point board you're up against or a three point board. Yeah. What, okay, I would hit here for sure. It all makes a difference. I would hit just five one. Well, it breaks more easily with um so two one is seven point and looks like five four. Okay, Actually, now break the six break the eight point. Yeah, you can do that. You're right. It's just about to say. Just about to say. But break it Seems... clean. Don't leave a black. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, there we go. Six one or even off with an eight. Or a six, I mean. Or how about that? Oh boxes. Okay, that now it's my now gamut. it might not be too good anymore. Well, he's gonna come out with both. Okay, now the chances of Gamma go way down. He just double double pass. He cannot. Greg cannot take this. I think his take point is like twenty six percent or something. Okay, the cross game. She was not in play. I think uh, it's about what, 18%? Uh, five away, Crawford is is a uh, 16.5%. Okay, there we go. 16.5% for. It's important. It's important to know these positions in case you have a three away, X away, recube. Because that's the only time you're really going to need it. When it's like the when you're playing a seven point match, you're leading four to one. You better know when to send the recube in a gamblers position. Mm -hmm. So four five is going to hit. It's just going to keep going, I guess. Yeah, this is wrong. Well, he's got to hit the. Well, yeah, you got to hit him a five point. This has to be a mistake. Now Gammons is not a big deal. Uh, it goes from. Um, Jerry would uh, blow off a free pass is all, all that would be because Gammon. Seven points. Strong double sixes. That's a very strong roll. White wants to hit something. How about a 3-2? Sure, why not? Coming up's the right idea here. Yeah, it's coming up all the way, too. Preparing to get pounded. When you're down in the race, I think you got to hit this. Well, you're up in the race. You hitting here, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. I am too. I, I hit, hit in the four, then um, six five to diversify. It leaves fours and aces, but uh, he's got four. He needs fours to cover, so those are duped. Nine four six five in my play. And then if you get away with it, you got a strong position. Yeah, this is wrong. I mean, you just let him escape. And now you got to clear it at 18 points. Well, Jerry Connor in the race said he's way up and he can win without it. But then he no, he's no, get no. up to – would have worked. I think hitting would have been correct. Jerry would not have – or Greg would not have hit back. But um, White's not away yet either, so. <clears throat> so double deuces. There's oh, my two. God. Why not even come up with two? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, actually, you can just start running and count. But it's such a strong position when um, you make five in a row. Now he's on the edge. Well, here we go. <clears throat> Six four is not good. With two off the eight point. And that's it. Six four. <clears throat> wow. 
So one, two, three, completely safe. Actually, you can you gotta get out. You can stay there. How about staying on the uh, sixteen points? Make the bar in two point. Yeah, well, maybe. I could be right. Uh, look, gives you points sevens for not much reason. Sevens. I'm not sure. Well, you're down. It all comes down to the race, and we don't yeah. know what the race is. Race is. If it if it's, it's close at all, you got to run out of there. If if um you really if you're, if you're still way there. behind, I think this play would be correct. Just to jump out, come down, and then make the two points. I mean, he's counting, so he's gonna know. Twenty pips. He's four pips up after the roll, so he's got to do that. Well, go to the bar oh. for your last one. Don't. don't You're ahead. I think he's up four pips. Okay, then then he must. I did a real quick way. count. If if he's ahead by four pips, he has to go out all the way to the three points and then just to the bar. Right? That's that's after the roll, so it'd be like an even race. They say when you're down four pips in the race after the roll, the race is even. Or you're on roll down four pips that's even. I still don't know why you went to the two points out of the bar. Would you I don't that? either. You constrain yourself a little bit. It's, it's especially better for the double mm. fours. <clears throat> Six two like that. That's there. Yeah, that's fine. Six and two, yeah. Just playing for the race now. Six one that counts as we've seen before. It just plays two three, like this and like this. And then split. Yeah, okay. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I thought splitting would have been a little better. I would play the eight point here. I don't like this play. Just playing the eight point, oh, then you could go and deep roll like a double two or something. Okay, Jerry's running out of time, so yeah, he must go forward. He needs to get off that. Anything else, he's, he's wasting pips by playing insiders. So Go down like and in. Now he wants to go 6-3 or there. something like that. 4-3 is not great. Oh, it is. It clears it up. Okay, fair enough. Sorry. 6-3 to the 4 point would be my play. Just putting as much checkers in the 4 point as possible. As many checkers in the 4 point as possible. Usually the right idea. So this is a nice game for their error race. It always is when you get these racing games, yeah. especially, at, especially at Crawford. Good roll for Greg. Easy decision after easy decision. Yeah, crossovers are big here. Just make the crossovers and peel at every opportunity. <clears throat> so on stack the stack, maybe six five. Five two. These holes aren't so bad. We're gonna big stack in the, the six. Okay, that's it. And we have a post Crawford game, and Greg only needs a gammon to win. Now, Jerry will have a free pass. Yeah, he will. So the free pass is worth um, what about they say? I'm not sure. One percent, no maybe two, something like that, somewhere in that area. Ask the mathematicians in the backgammon circle. I have no idea. Is Jerry trying to come back from the dead? Showing it's double six will do it. Maybe not now. I need double six of now. All right, that's it. That's it. Okay. Post Crawford game, we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Should uh, Greg's strategy be double at the first opportunity? 
Yeah, of course. You have to. You have to when he's at an odd score. When he's at an even score, you can start playing a bit of games. But here, you, you, if you don't cube right away, it's a mistake. Okay. Jerry gets to see two rolls now. His, his and Greg's. And where he has to decide. Double pass. This, this looks like a double pass to me. There he's yeah. doubling, and Jerry's passing. So 10-8. Greg still needs two wins or one gammon win. Greg was clearly a favorite that game. So that free pass came in handy for him, for Jerry. This is the wrong idea. That's the right idea. You, you want to make a point? It's, it's more gammonish because if he gets a gammon, he wins a match. Now Jerry has to take this. No, no doubt. Just scoop it up. Split. I would split here. I, 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 Black has a primate structure. You want to play for the race. There's no reason to stay back on the 24 points. I Three, think it's the wrong guy. Yeah, sorry. What's that? I thought, he, I thought he should have split 24-22. Uh, um, oh, okay, interesting. Maybe you're right. It kind of dupes the three. It makes the threes, you know, kind of dupey. <clears throat> makes the ace point. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not a great, it's not a great play. But what else? It's a three-point board, and um, um, he's got some blots out there. Wow, he's in a lot of trouble now. Here we go. There's the blots. The blots are going to get him in trouble. Now he's in trouble. It's not that he needs a gamut so much, but it helps win in the game when um, you're not doing anything but dancing. Coming in the two is very nice there. It's a lot better than coming in on the four. So 6 2. No, you can make the prime or just come out. No, I think he just got a hit. Hit and split. We'll be my play. Prime is usually not a good strategy if the ace point's already made. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great number. Wow. Make the four point. No reason to step up to the anchor. Make the four point. Yes. 100%. This could turn everything around. Oh. Ben. Oh, wow. This could be it. Double five, and it's all over. Doesn't even need all that. Now, this could get him, Greg, back in trouble again if he, if yeah, Jerry he doesn't, care, he doesn't care about losing a gamut. But I think you're right. I think 13 9 is probably a little bit better play there. Yeah, now he's got, he's got a like hit. I guess so. Well, you know, block control, when, when do Gamut this. moves you the match, now you got an anchor and only one big liability, block. Yeah, I think this is probably a good play, to be honest. Hitting a little bit too deep. Now you yeah. got to anchor and make the point. Have to anchor. Next uh, best three. Points are always good. Ten points better than lifting a blot on the... 11 point. I would make points. Underrated. Those outside points. Touched on that a little bit earlier in the match. <clears throat> it's probably thinking about the stripping nature of it, which, which usually is a concern. But... Um, if he makes the points, he can he can break them to make better points. I think it's the wrong idea here. Still leaving. Um, this leaves more numbers, which um, here it is. Here's the more there. numbers. I guess he just got a hit. Actually, interesting. Maybe not. That was two down. Is two I think down. He got a hit. It kind of dupes the fives. Two down is very reasonable, but I think like at, at, for money, for money, you would hit all day, every day, right? But it's just here, you really, really don't want to lose a gammon. 
So maybe just two down, playing for a bit of prime value is better. Well, the nine point black versus the three point anchor is very strong. When you got hit back, yes, you want to get hit back. Only good with- roll. Ten and four, I guess. Or it is. This is better. Now he'll hit if he can. He's got to hit now. Yes. Something three, something five. Fanner. That's not great. Wrong, something five. Okay, make the outside point. Of course. Block control, if anything else. But that just naturally um, made a good play. Okay. There's, some, there's something fun. Right <clears throat> Clean up a block. Yeah, absolutely. When you're on gammon save, um, you got to look at the quantity of, of the blocks that you're leaving. Six four. You're just going to make the point. Yep. Making points, hitting blocks, that's white strategy right now. Pretty much. Ooh, what do we that's have terrible. here? That's terrible. That's not, this I guess, just makes leaves four another points. block. You know, if you're leaving another block, you might as well make the four point. Which yeah, is exactly. Board. It's really not a good roll, but what else are you going to do? Yeah, the idea of making the um, – Doing the outside plot there is, is not the right idea. Five one hits. There's yeah. a five. Five is easy. Just make the ace point or just hit and come down. You know what? Making the ace point is a great play. It gives you six covers and six. Exactly. Not really good over there. So. Well, it's duplicated anyway. It's hitting's fine. But I do like yeah. that play. Well, that's right. Yeah. Making the ace point. The other play is like step, is stepping up and hitting. But there's not no, much point in that. So you can, no, 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 no. Oh, that's oh. That was cringy. It gives. That was cringy. Now, Black and Binkin, you can uh, clean up a block. I don't think. Uh, pick and, pick and pass is my play. Is it? Maybe not. Yeah. Well, if he and pass, hopefully um, Greg the will is, a couple times. And, yeah, um, the problem is, is that that's the gamut win play, right? You don't need to win a gamut. So maybe just nine fours. Oh, this play too, something like this. This is a black control play. One yeah, black. This is reasonable. Though I think I like, I think I like nine to four better than this play, just because you don't want to step up under the gun. What's going to happen is Greg's going to hit him with any ace, deuce, or three, and then Jerry's going to be under pressure to roll five. 4 2 is great. Get, no, him out. Out. Get him out there. Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is an obvious play, even for money. 319, that's it. The only problem with it is it loses gammons, but you don't great. care about losing gammons anyway. Oh, it's, wow. His prayers have. have... Okay. There's a 1, 6 is out again. <clears throat> you just want to make sure you're not going to crash. Jerry could be in trouble. A lot of gammons here. One six jumps out, I guess. Yeah, I like it. Well, the thing is, if Jerry rolls an ace, oh, ace six. There it is. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, yeah. he's got aces, aces in uh, what nines and elevens. Hit you back. went to one, and he didn't do it. Oh wow! Now he's back. He's back to this, and leaving shots. He was too worried about getting out yeah. rather than putting pressure on black if he rolled an ace. You could be right. Six. So now it's just 2-1 at the A point, I guess. Duping aces here? No, no, no. You want to bring the two stuff. in, I think. There's also other stuff that hits, like 6-5. No, 1-4 uh, is great. <clears throat> so it hits on 1 and in with 4. That's no shots for... The snow shots was builders make points down there. And it's all over, basically. 
not yet. No, it makes a two point. No, no, it doesn't. It's it's another one. That's no blots. I mean, or no shots, I should say. So that was better for Jerry. I'm hoping to make a point. Four to it. There it is. Now it's all over. Jerry's got this under control. Barring the set of three. Actually, double threes is a miracle because it's actually is a shot now. Get off double threes. Bring it into the six point. Another builder for the three point. It is better if Jerry makes a three point. He's got this. Now just um, pick and pass. Pick and pass. Greg's praying. Yeah, he's actually doing in this position now. You can pass again. Yep. Otherwise, you're leaving a shot if you don't pick and pass. That's shot free. It's kind of ugly, though. So, uh, Greg still has some chances in this game. Well, a miracle. Even though he doesn't have a three point, it's like, it's like um, a three point game. Yeah. With a slight chance for Jerry to take it away from him. <clears throat> Aces switch. Switch, switch. Twice. Switch twice. The higher the hole, the better. Yeah. Although it does leave a double six shot. But you're going to have to leave double sixes anyway, I think. Yes. Yes, it did. Double sixes and fives. But five's not so bad. You can do an outside shot. Uh, outside. That's, that's solid. There's one. Yeah, there's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. There wasn't much else. You can't, anything else would have left. Um, so 6-1 is the only, actually 6-1, 5-1, double sixes, double fives, double fours. That's it. It's yeah, pretty that's, much over. And thank you all for, thank you all for joining today's stream. Congratulations to Jerry Tanzi for his first ever ABT Open win. Probably thrilled about that. And look at him now. He's very happy. Congratulations to Jerry Tanzi. First ABT tournament for a grandmaster. He's a grandmaster, right? Absolutely. This is G1. And uh, congratulations. Yes. We want to make sure our viewers know about uh, the Masters event at uh, 2.30. John O'Hagan versus Dana Nazarian. It should be a great match. They're both top players. And, and uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for having Frank and myself here on the commentaries. Always a pleasure to do and talk about backgammon with with the uh, public. I thank you, Ryan, for... Um, thank you, Frank. Uh, oh, you did? And uh, we're we'll, we'll looking forward to we'll, seeing everybody at 2.30. We'll do another commentary again sometime soon. Okay. See ya.
welcome to the 2021 Viking Class Extreme. It's really great to be back live. We're here at our pre-event, which is the Riverboat Schweck Cruise. Uh, we're having a great time, and we hope to have a good time this weekend. We should have some great matches coming your way. We'll be streaming the finals of the ABT Open, as well as the Grand Crystal Beaver 22 Masters event. Uh, we hope to see you here next year, and we're going to enjoy some tacos and two for one margaritas. All right. See you next year. See ya. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the finals of the Grand Crystal Beaver Masters event. Uh, I'm Doran Bishop. And with me is the man, the myth, the legend, Ray Fogerland himself. Hello, Ray. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I don't know what happened this year. I'm not in the finals of this. I won it must three be of some, them. A glitch in the system. I don't know how that happened. We, were you in the tournament? Uh, yeah, I was in the tournament. I played Gary Bauer, and I managed to last one game. And I got uh, gammon on an AQ. So, uh, and then uh, John beat Gary, and uh, here we are. Dana's been in the finals of everything. He already won one event. The I can't remember what it was, the Steve Brown event, or the, uh, oh, yeah. what was it? Well, we have two exceptional players, um, both among the best in the, in the nation, if not the world, and it's been a long time that way. On the bottom is uh, John O'Hagan. And uh, uh, on the top, but they're probably looking at one another instead of vertically, is uh, Dana Nazarian, now hailing from the Bay Area. So uh, it should be an excellent event, and uh, I know the players are anxious to begin. Yeah, I bet they are. John can't wait to play another final. He played 1.5 in his last final, and he lost 13 to 1 in the long ship final, I think it was. It was probably so, overdue uh, then for some good luck. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to hit something this match. Yeah, yeah. But Dana's so been look at the players are ready. All right. Looking forward the... to a good match. The obligatory fist bump and we're off. Now, John plays fast and accurate and Dana will stop and think about and he'll grind out some of the most obscure plays but if he makes one you probably don't want to bet against it he's really good Doran, is there anything you try and do when you sit down at the finals? You try to get comfortable? Well, there have been so few occasions, Ray, when I've had that opportunity. Oh, well, hey. But um, the uh, I try to at least gather some information. Usually, if you're playing in the finals, you're playing somebody that you've dealt with before. But uh, if it's an unknown quantity, you want to see how they react to the cubes you give them. Maybe right. send over one that you didn't, you might not necessarily feel is right, but you got to find out what he's going to do with those things. So later in the match, you can make some accurate guesses. Um, when you have two players who have played against one another so many times, like uh, John and Dana, do you think that approach uh, has, has merit or um, you think we'll just see plays that I both... just see them playing their best, I think, you know, and John has been playing more. So I'll expect him to play a little faster. And Dana looks for the tiniest things. I know that I've talked to Dana a number of times and he goes through every single play, play by play of his XG analysis and any mistake he wants. He doesn't want to make any mistakes, you know, right. And he'll spend some time. So we'll, let's see if the time, if, if John has a time advantage very far into this match. 
so far the plays seem to be pretty much by road. Nothing, nothing too surprising or challenging for either player. Yeah, mutual holding game. Let's go get a burrito. <laughs> we don't have to watch this. Each player is just uh, waiting out the rolls, hoping for big doubles at some point to break contact and get a racing lead. Yeah, let's just who, he who rolls double sixes wins. By the way, everybody, um, if you're enjoying this, it's a good idea to hit the like button, I'm told, or even subscribe to the thing. I don't exactly know how that helps, but I don't exactly know how tipping the staff helps, but I always do that, too. All right. I'm looking forward to your tip, Ray, at the end of our match. I mean, I'm, since I'm part of the staff now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're officially yeah. part of the staff. And I look forward to my customary 6%. Uh, <laughs> okay. Which I, which I know you provide to your servers at restaurants. Yeah. Did you uh, take up real estate lately or what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, by day I am uh, still a mild mannered uh, attorney. Lawyer. All right. Yeah. Now, you've been in Las Vegas for how long, right? Still there? Yeah, just over 10 years. Yeah. Things it's, been, it's been a good place for me. Yeah. Man, this is so boring. Let's see. Dana's thinking about the play. Oh, he yeah, made the very, very small equity swing, regardless, but every little bit helps. Yeah, I think I maybe would have slotted all the points just because I wouldn't want people to see me not do that. Right. And it's not as though he was going to be getting a, a shot anytime soon. Right. So build it and uh that's something that I do probably to my detriment is I'll make the big play when there's a whole bunch of people watching. <laughs> and usually so Dana, while we were speaking, Dana was undoubtedly <laughs> counting the tips to see if he has a racing lead after this play. And I'm without counting them, I'm going to take his word for it that he does. It looks like he does have a small lead in the race. And so when yeah. you're ahead, Six, race. Seven, when you're behind, don't race, right? Right. Now he'll fill up his board while he's waiting for the next set to, to break contact. And John just fills his in. John said how this is how the finals he lost 13 to 1 went. He says, You're sitting there waiting for a shot. You just build your board. You can't really make too many mistakes. And apparently, if he got a shot, he never hit it. In that match. Oh, yeah, Dana's water bottle was in the – oh, he rolled his – was that uh, John has to do the counting. <laughs> see. I find it useful to move the checkers and then count. If he moved them out to the 14 point, he could see he was up two in the well, outfield. Black, and that. Black has 107 by my count after this roll. All right. Uh, to – to 105 for white, but so white has a little waste. So black is still behind after this roll. So John concludes the same and decides not to, to uh, break contact any more than he has. Yeah, he maximizes contact with that play. Now Dana's going to have to tiptoe through the tulips a little bit. And both of them are just open to roll double fives and win the game. I don't know about you, but I, I like an opening game like this just to get settled in, not face any difficult decisions. I find that my errors in, uh, in matches typically take place um, most significantly in, in the first game or two. Uh, so file that away next time we play. Yeah. I, had a, I have a tendency to overtake, I think, in the first game, I did that in one final, and I got back in, and then I went up 10 to 6, and then I lost from there. So, I don't know, it's weird, but, yeah, I'll make mistakes in the first game, too. 6-2, who rolled that? John, John does not like oh, that 6. <laughs> Dana, Dana was about to run out of time, but John uh, does the honors first. 
Now, see, I would have been tempted to close the board there and ch challenge him to go ahead and hit that, but it, he felt like the double shot was not worth it. Yeah. 20, 20 shots instead of and 11. I bet he's it's right. Good. You think it's right? Yeah. It's black. But there's a big difference between. So that kind of compensates somewhat. But Dana Apparently, has to decide which four to play. So probably counting return shots at this point. Right. Generally speaking, I would think playing to his 11 point would be correct because, uh, well, I'm not sure about that after all. Well, the closer your checkers are together, the more time that he can make them come together as a point. But... Uh, He's probably thinking in specific terms there. Huh? Two six from the bar. Uh, that's <laughs> uh -huh, catchy. See, he made that point. I, I heard that once, once or twice before. I can't remember who, who came up with it. No, 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 yeah. It's a new thing. Dana likes that role. He buttons up. He likes it for now. Well, John's going to have to move. So this is a. Pressure's back on John. And my he guess is he'll, he'll, he'll or should he break leave his board. It? And do you step up is the question, right? Right. Do you think he should leave it or? I, I would leave it. I would leave it. He has, I would, I, that's Maximize just my. contact. Okay. Yeah. He has the yeah, better, risk John, John has the better it. board and he's uh -huh. um, still behind in the race after this roll. So if you're behind in the race, you want to seek the more contact. Look, he's going to move it up there and make us look stupid. The danger is that Dana will roll a 3-2 or a 3-4 or a 3-5 and be able to pick and pass. Right. Yeah. Double fours. He, ouch. Even then, though, John will have return shots and Dana will have some work to do. So it looks right for John to have stayed back like he did. I think so. He still hasn't hit the clock yet, right? And so, and he's so he's figuring out whether he wants to lift it off the six point, I believe. He, but right, right. Or does he want to? But right now he's played six to two, and he's thinking so. He must be counting shots. So he's going to either move that ace back and lift, or make some other kind of decision. I guess I would lift it off the blot off the six point. So if I hit a fly shot, I don't oh no, that's not what he was thinking about. He was thinking about stepping up. Yeah, well, he's going to look he's, at that, and I think he, he might actually be counting shot numbers and 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 yeah, with the other play, he had to discount the numbers that pick and passed. So this is a could be a fairly complex count yeah. now he's, he's going back to looking at three two interesting he's not looking at six five at least yeah evidently he doesn't like six to five and i kind of do so i i don't think it was what his, he's what, what do you right. what do you see is the advantage of picking up uh lifting from six to five uh, it seems to me that if if um uh, there's a hit on the six point and a return shot to the six point, except unless it's five one or six six, you'd be able to lift that plot off the six relatively safe there. And it leaves you spare fives. Yeah. Um, and he apparently agrees with you because that's what he did. Now we're going to find out this is where the rubber meets the road here. And it's an immediate benefit for leaving that checker on the six point. Right. Because now you have uh, indirect shots or additional direct shots if he uh, if Dana chooses to break the 10 point here. I don't think he's going to break the 10. He's he's kind of got to come to the 5 point, but he'll take a little bit of time. He doesn't mind. So now four more numbers hit thanks to that checker on the uh, 6 point, but no such luck. And oh, John's uh, got the same dice he had in the other final, apparently. John he has missed. to. John might want to think about leaving that plot on the six point, but 
that would turn his five point board into a four point board. There's a big difference. And yeah, there's also a big would, difference. It would hurt his racing chance. Too. And the race isn't so bad right now. What is it? Well, 49 and 36, it looks like at 85 for John. And um, 16, certainly 14. Oh, man, 25. That's a lot. Yeah. 23 That's pips? A, 23, a little wastage for Dana with those extra deckers on his two and one point, but uh, still a very powerful cube, I, I think. You know, I think I might let this one go. Although, let's see, he's going to. He's not always going to clean that one up. So there's potential contact now and later when he has to break the 10 point. But uh, 23 is an awful lot of pips. I suspect John is looking at numbers that will uh, not get Junior to safety from the midpoint. Uh, and those numbers are few and far between, really. Something yeah, like if you've a, got a point that you can land on, normally if it's just one blot against that anchor, it's, uh, what is it, 16 numbers are blocked? I'm looking at 4, 2, 5, 1. That's yeah, about six, it. 6, 6. Uh, Double 2. Six, six. Yeah. So about seven numbers, and uh, that'll be hit twice out of those seven times, and then you only have a five-point board. So it looks right to pass, and that's what John decided yeah, to do. John let that go. The other thing is that even if the pip count were closer, the worst place on the board to race from is your opponent's bar point. And why is that? Because the crossovers, or the long crossovers getting into your outfield and then another long crossover to get home. So – yeah. So that's the least optimal place to race from. Mm -hmm. Very often I roll I, double sixes, it works out pretty good. Yeah. Oh, John's playing much better this game. <laughs> he waked up and decided to start playing well, huh? Oh, Dan's yeah. playing well too. Yeah. Oh Bye. man. <laughs> Both of these guys, by the way, are like the consummate gentlemen over the table. They John are. never, he's totally unflappable. And Dana, he refuses to uh, to show any emotion or, or seem phased. And he says he fashioned, he borrowed that from Steve Brown. He learned that from Steve Brown. And uh, Steve was a great Minnesota player. Passed away last year, I believe. Yeah. Very, very nice man. Won the uh, Santa Claus lookalike contest for a few years. Yeah. It was yeah. back in the Federation. I think he's the one guy that I never want to bet from. <laughs> Every time I bet that guy, I lost. Steve? Yeah. Yes, Steve was sharp. And he didn't mind betting. And he was, uh, he liked to have a little bit of fun too. I like Steve. It's and interesting Dana's that both. Real close I was say that interesting that both players are wearing uh, fashionable black today. Uh, in my experience playing against them, they are both uh, cold steel black walls. Excellent players. They're like granite and uh, are very, uh, Calm, cool, and collected over the board. Yeah. Either that or they're big fans of Steve Jobs, the one or the other. <laughs> I got Dana. Uh, he used to work in the semiconductor industry, and he was telling me that uh, he quit. He, or he, I don't know if he quit or retired or exactly what. I didn't get into it. But, um, well, if you work in the semiconductor industry for a while, and many people are fortunate enough to be able to quit. So, well, like you know, it. at one point, I believe he was the CEO of his company. So I don't know, maybe they gave him, what do they call that, a golden shower or something? He, something like that. <laughs> parachute, golden shower. Parachute. It's, all, golden it's all parachute. Yeah. You, you, That's better. You, you may know more about the Yeah. <laughs> 
Two six in the bar. Oh no, John can't <laughs> like that role so much. But still, he played it well though. He did, I thought. All right, Dana now has both uh, both five points, which in a especially in a game like this, it seems to be one that may go on for a while that has long-term asset value. But look at the asset here. If John is wise enough to make his two point, that will totally eliminate two six from the bar for Dana for the rest of the game. Although he's uh, thinking about something else. He get, is he going to play the three block play and run? Uh, he must not know you're commentating. <laughs> Yeah, he does. He, oh, he's aware yeah. that you're commentating. And he made he made the, the Fogerland play, uh -huh. oh, yeah. knowing that having the six point and two point probably will result in fifty percent dancing from the bar, regardless of whether you have any more yeah. home board points. Now Dana has to play very careful because he certainly doesn't want to get hit when John has the two and six point. We're just teasing. I have a lot of fun. I'll, I just kind of perpetuate the myth that 2-6 is the most often uh, rolled number from the bar. Ray Fogel and the man who... by just announcing it every time it happens. <laughs> <laughs> announcing it sometimes quite, quite vocally, as I recall. Um, there we go, John. Uh, he might have a doubling advantage. There's going to be enough up in the race. But Dana will have a pretty easy take, I think, with those 60 pits back there. Now, to me, I, I would play fairly quickly. Uh, well, this is uh, oh, this is Dana's role. Okay. Yeah, I think he's supposed to stay back, isn't he? I okay, think so, he, yeah. yeah. And here comes the cube. John's already figured out he was going to send it. Dana it's was like expecting it, so he buttoned up a little bit. But uh, uh, let's see. Well, it's interesting you uh, you point out that he decided to stay back with the four on the previous roll. If he had stepped up and a double came his way, it seems like that would be a fairly easy take. Wouldn't you agree? But he decided... Um, to hang yeah. back. So if he was planning to take anyhow, you would think he would take here too because he wouldn't make a play that would reduce his equity. Right. It looks and like a take to me. It did. And um he was gonna he was planning on taking the whole time. He just he takes a couple seconds to reorient himself. Uh, I'm sure. John already knew the pip count. Dana familiarized himself with it, and he just used the axiom: if uh, if you're behind in the race, you play for contact, and that's why you stay back on the ace board. You get punished with double fives or something, but his goal is to make it as hard as possible for John to come home, and John is just trying to play safe. Now, John faces a choice between hitting loose and uh, trying to uh, get some breathing room to play behind the five anchor, but he elects instead to go 13 6. And Dana. Well, this will tighten up the race. Oh my God, he hit too. Dana, yeah. Dana, Dana in. in uses some torture on John by playing 8-3 first as if he hadn't noticed the uh, ability to hit on his 10 point. Yeah, that's evil. Yeah. But Dana, he actually, he will look at plays and often sometimes he will actually choose the one with what he calls the most burn factor. <laughs> that could have been a burn factor deal. Cover the three <laughs> and then find the hit. Um well, now Dana has a choice to make, and it's a pretty nice one. Sure does he is. Have a, does he have a redouble? Is he too good to redouble? Is he not good enough to redouble? I, of those, I, I can't believe he doesn't think he's good enough to redouble here. Right. He's just wondering if it's too good right now. 
The only problem he has is his threes are duplicated to make the four point or to hit in the outfield. And he decides to send it. John immediately passes. He didn't want any part of that. What do you think? Would you have rolled on there, Dorn? I'm a bird in the hand kind of guy because I play a lot of money games. And oh, okay. um, I think I'm a little uh, skewed to be too conservative because I simply don't consider playing on for a gammon enough. That, that being <laughs> said, I, I still think there, I, I think it's a proper double and pass because well, uh, in part of the duplication that you mentioned. Reason. Well, that was, that's really interesting because on, on the other hand, I almost exclusively play tournaments and, um, um, you know, I would think you'd be more likely in a money game to get a take there. You're not in the finals of some event like the Grand Crystal Beaver. Nobody's going to take that. So uh, um, that's just a kind of a different thing. That's true. That's true. Um, and, and my um, comment, I had initial cubes more in mind than, than re-cubes. But, um, but I still think it has uh, biased me slightly uh, in favor of a bird in the hand. Yeah, and uh, uh, that's just an interesting deal because I would have had a ten. I would have given a little more thought to maybe rolling on there. But I think that uh, one of the mistakes I've commonly found that I'm making, according to XG, is that I'm playing on too often, mm -hmm. and I should be doubling mm -hmm. people more. Even in to me, there seemed to be a very strong. There seemed to me a, a, to be a, a pretty sizable swing on that in that position in the event that you, you didn't make a point, uh, or otherwise, you no. Know, or hit him, right? Hit him, and then there's an enter uh, entering roll, and now all of a sudden Dana's got a block stuck back stuck back on the ace point, and uh, John has a very playable position. So, um, it was yeah, an interesting and, uh, position. Um, now here, you here's, and here's I a and play Dana that, uh, all both know that uh, he wasn't going to scare John if it was, you know, became a position that was takeable. John's not going to get scared and make a mistake at Cuber. And both of those guys have factored that in. Sometimes you get to play an unknown quantity in the finals. I mean, sometimes you don't. So uh, when you're not, you better play pretty good. And both of these guys will, I'm sure. But now Dana's up three to nothing. Did Dana roll this 6-5? No, that's John's roll. John is considering breaking the midpoint. I think that's what I'd be doing. I just sit there and rely on the bar point to generate some shots or, you know, wait for a set. He's not that bad in the race, is he? I'm not sure. No, we're getting into a TMP position. Oh, but Dana yeah, rolls. So just uh, roll a set. Pretty nice roll for Dana. Absolutely. Pretty nice roll for John. There we go. Now we can look at this race. Let's see, John, if he comes around, John would be up 18. And down uh, 96 two, for John. Up 10, up nine. John will be after this. I just count the difference. As there he goes, he did it. He's up nine. And that's the deal. There's an 18 difference on the outside. All right, so now this will be like. Uh, the boring race until somebody. Rolls a two one or somebody rolls boxes. Oh, speaking of two one. Look at that. See, and uh, so John. Uh, John has eighty seven. Okay. Dana has. Uh, I'm counting correctly. He's down two. I don't. Ninety six or so. It looks. Uh, Looks like a, a pretty uh, prototypical double and take to me, especially with yeah. John being down in the race. I, I down in the score. Yeah, it'd be more likely to. Um, 
The other thing is that when he does this, John, uh, I see an awful lot of intermediate players playing men into the six point because they want to start the bear off as soon as possible, but it's very important to fill up the four point. Especially with uh, checkers already on his one and two point, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have checkers on the one and two point, and there's a lot more to be said for just uh, loading up on the six point, but it'll be important for John to fill the gap on the four point, and that's what he'll he'll do that right now. No, he's not going to play the ace there. He can do it later. Okay. Chooses to diversify. Well, Dana had an opportunity to catch up in the race there, and he flunked with another 3-1. Let's see what John does. If he were a better player, he would have rolled a higher number. 2-1. There you go. Give the cube, roll 3-1, 2-1. That's the way to capitalize on your racing lead. And interesting, John decides to pile up on the six-point. Still confident he can put a checker or two on the four, I guess. And Dana gains a pip. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Bad Backgammon Rolling. Unbelievable. One guy rolls seven, the other guy rolls eight. <laughs> and two, 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 one. Two, one. Four point alert. Four point alert. Like sands through the hourglass. These are the days of our lives. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to put one on the four channel. Oh, you're going to yeah. lose Come this on. game. You haven't Ray and I are good, but we can only vamp for so long, guys. Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. A joker. Five, three. <sighs> Dana uh, is uh, it, when you have two checkers left of both bear in it's, it's uh, usually a better, good idea to think well consider it as though you were bearing off and what roles are most likely to uh, improve your chances of getting both checkers in on the next roll look at John he knew he was going to fill that four pin in later I was going to say Dana's position looked much better and then that's John filled that up the that, that's why John up. is uh, the number nine giant currently he gets to yeah, and I think he's, he's in the top five on the Galaxy ratings, 3,100 right. and some. That's just incredible. John's an outstanding player, a very nice man. Has uh, more titles to his credit than I can count. If you're just joining us, we're watching uh, the finals of the Grand Crystal Beaver event uh, here, and uh, John O'Hagan is playing against Dana Nazarian. Still in the early stages, you haven't missed much. Um, if you like what you're watching, please uh, indicate as much on the YouTube channel and subscribe. And we'd also invite you to visit the usbgf.org webpage to the US Backgammon Federation if you're interested in increasing your skill and to find out about upcoming events. Well, if Daniel pops boxes in here, he might steal this and he'd have a commanding lead in the match. But I think John's going to comfortably close the gap to three to two. So I predict we'll probably have kind of a close back and forth struggle between these two. And that's no surprise. <laughs> No, uh -uh. If I, someone asked me for a betting favorite, I'd say I'd flip a coin. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, John's more well known because he's been around for a long time. And Dana took a lot of time off for family and uh, his career. But, uh, John has been a fearsome competitor. Dana. John has been a yeah. John's been a long time regular on the ABT tour. Um, he uh, finds time to travel around the country, and uh, no, the way I, I envy him right for play. that. Kind of like you, right? Right. Six four. Would you, would you have stayed at the bar point? I thought you're supposed to, after the guy makes the five point, you stop at the bar. I didn't like that move John made running. Uh, the XG play uh, and uh, John's play are, are probably very close to one another. Maybe that John has looked at the position and just feels more comfortable making that play of running. 
I, I tell all my uh, students, with, and they tend to be intermediates, that uh, you have communication when you stop at the bar point with a six, and you don't want five checkers on the midpoint. So, um, and there he, if you if you go beyond the bar point, you're out of communication, and the radios don't reach. So that you're sort of giving away a free shot out there. That's the way I try and explain it. Let's see what happens here, Dana has stationed himself on John's bar point, and he's got that vital John communication does. going on there. John decides to take away half a roll. And 10% of the time, it's all of the roll. All right. That's right. Sometimes they dance, and it works out well for John in the near term. He picks and passes and makes a third point. And Dana is... Well, but a fan, 25% there, but he got in. John greedily makes the four anchor. He's, He's rolling so good, he hasn't had to think. He hasn't wasted a second in this game. John took a, a, a substantial amount of time in the first game uh, looking at, at plays, but since then uh, has used his clock very well, as has Dana. Yeah. He's getting into the flow. Now Dana's going to go into the tank a little bit. Oh, he's forced to leave a shot, but he gets a new point. Good news, bad news. And John hit. What, where, where does he hit? Oh, my goodness. Does he dare break his anchor to hit? If... Uh... Dana dances on those 25% of the rolls. He's got a double shot now. I think that's the right play, what I would make. But Dana's able oh, to hit back immediately. Five. Oh, my. Yeah. You don't get in the finals by fanning on three-point boards. And you don't get in the finals by not being able to re-anchor very quickly at the drop of a hat. That's what yeah, right. done. These guys are good. <laughs> clearly experts. <laughs> Yeah, I would have had to think about that hit. I would have tended to bring down a hit and uh, bring the wood down, but then I'd still be stuck behind the five prime. So what do I know? If John did it, I would go with John's play. What do you think of this five-one play that Dana has to uh, well, step up to the, the uh, John's three-point or all the way out to the eighteen? I'm. I'm coming out to the 18. If he hits you off the eight point, he's got to leave two blots over there. And it's the easier. If, it, if you get missed, then you're uh, much closer to home. You know, opted for uh, stepping up to the three. Also had merit. Now uh, it worked out very well for him because he would have been hit with the other play. But John's able but to hit back. But he would have hit back on the bar, right? Or yeah. would he have? Anyway, the four three. It's oh, that's right. How often a seven comes up when you're on the roof? But oh, the and there's one of those. Uh, not, uh, yeah, four numbers that. out of thirty six. Now he needs the threes to move on the other side, but I guess he's going to make the bar point. I don't know what, uh, what else he would do except. But, oh, now he can step out. Is now the time to step out to the eighteen point? I'll do it at some point, but I guess the question is. And then ten feel lucky, nine, huh? You feel lucky that you can keep Dana at bay while you extricate your other checker from there. Well, um, so in this case, you got trees don't grow on trees, so he's going to have to. He does that. Would you go ten to nine or what? I, I, well, if ten nine has the advantage of of getting within range of the three point to make that. On the other hand, staying back has the advantage of uh, leaving less play, shots. Playing catcher if uh, if he comes out to your uh, to to the nine point. Look at that! Still, Dana fanned again. Uh, John Ooh, can John at least look be at the thinking cube. about it. Yeah, you can't be too comfortable in Dana's chair. Think, looking at all those builders and 
relying on being able to come in. I don't know. John is thinking about it. Let's see. John's got two men back, so he's up. At times like this, I might want to check. Yeah, I, it seems like an easy take if uh, John were to double there. But now John decides to leave the extra shots to get a, a leave that fourth builder four out there. Six. Yeah. The inner rolls a respectable entering number. Mm -hmm. Probably make his two point and slot the eights. Yeah, I guess he's going to maintain contact out there. Oh, he can make the four point and slot the two. How about oh, that? Oh, correct. Correct. He'll probably, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, make those points in order, maybe. Uh, Big advantage to doing that. that. Yeah. John is probably not going to be breaking from that back bar point. And it decides to make the four point, and it, it looks like a solid, strong play. Now John's thinking about the cube. And here he has some definite threats to lose his market. All right, I'm trying to count the race. Let's see, it's 36 21. So John is down 15, 13, 3, 8, even. Like, uh, it was dead even. I think it's actually, it was dead even right there. If, I, if my quick count was right. Would you have spun it right? I don't know. You know, it's, it's a sexy cube. You had four builders, but you know, John uh, knows his customer. You want to give that cube to somebody who's capable of passing it. I don't think there's that many people playing in the open that would let that go, but um, you put some pressure, you know, then when you roll good, you can sometimes pound them, but here he's going to have to in my way, I think yeah, just, because it's a, just because it's a take, it may it may still be a double, and uh, I, I, I it seemed to me like a, a heads I win, tails I break even kind of proposition. So I may have been wrong, but I, I probably would have uh, tried it. Oh, interesting! John decides to uh, wow to kill a checker on his ace point instead of make a run for it. That surprises me. Yeah, that, I don't think that's that would have been, him, but. Oh, the two six but from the bar is going to force yeah. Dana to leave another shot. This must be the role John was hoping for from that play. <laughs> Otherwise, well, it would so. have been a bad number for him anyway, even if he split off the bar. But now John, I think, is going to have a double, but based purely on the volatility of this position, right? Yeah. So Dana, much Dana, happen. Dana has to leave two uh, home board points so John can afford to play aggressively because even if he's hit back, he'll have, he may have a nice return set of numbers from the bar. All right, so that's 52, that's 29, and 23 is 52. The outfield, if he plays that, is going to be exactly even. John has 97. Dana, after this roll, has, uh, have you done the counting, right? Uh, I was. I just counted the outfield. But uh, now, now we're going to see the volatility and see if uh, John sends this over. This strikes me as a very, very strong double. John's up by seven tips by my count and uh, is uh, honing in on two blocks. Him. Yeah. All right. Question isn't the double to me, but the take. Well, I predict that Dana will take it. I think John's going to. I, 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 I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll wager a nickel. I, I think okay. if, if John turns this, I think Dana will drop. All right. You're on. And we're going to have blood on the outside as well as on the arena of battle over here. Here's the John, cue. John does double. Uh, Dana will think about this for a long time. Don't drop it, Dana, or I'll be out five bucks. 
Oh, is that is that a nickel? I just spent a nickel. I meant like five pennies. I mean, what what am I? Oh, oh, I thought it was, you know, at least it wasn't five hundred. <laughs> Oh, okay. A well, nickel? I'll let you know if it was a nickel or five hundred after Dana. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, to to be determined at yes. a later date. Dana has a. He Dana decides to take a it. reason to take. Ah, yes. Cash in the bank for Uncle Ray. Well done. All right. Let's see who gets the last. Two six from the bar. Two six from the bar. This is setting up perfectly for you, right? Two five, he'll take it. Oh, he takes it. Bam. Now, Trying uh, to scare Dana. I mean, he might you, lift now. Yeah, do you lift from the 10 point or do you step out? You got you got a, you got two tasks to make, which you can only do one right now. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. It seems like I'd be kind of chicken here and, and lift, but uh, I, I would I would oh he does lift. I would I would step out because one, twos, and threes are duplicated there. All right. Now, uh, now he's facing a, a hit, and he's got to do something impressive again. Uh, I, I think I, I would have stepped out. Five. All In right. A, interesting position. I don't claim to know the right answer. I just want to do it. Oh, and he gets to hit back. Two oh heavyweights going at it now. They were this sparring. Guy is hot this weekend. Oh. Everybody gets what they ask for. Okay, here's a two six. That's what the announcer asked for. And let's see. Even if he doesn't hit it, that block's favored to be there next turn, right? Yeah. Well, Dane is thinking about should I double this? Now there's a guy that's confident. Nerves that is, of steel, huh? He either knows what the role's gonna be or he's uh Got much more confidence than I do. Oh, he knew what the role was going to be. He, knew he hit the play. <laughs> he didn't want to lose his market. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, I guess it's a hit lose, right? It, yeah. Dana will make the. Yeah, that's got to uh, be. The I, I'm not sure what Dana's thinking about. I, I would have picked up the dice by now with two checkers up on the bar, which are better by far, as our old friend Paul Gatigian would say. Yeah, also. Um, if you know that if they tell you that the guy is going to roll a two, would you prefer to have him hit you or anchor? I, I would. I'd much right. rather get hit. I think that's that's a great rule of thumb when you're thinking about which uh, which checker to hit or whether to hit a checker inside your home board. Yeah, it'd be real hard to bring it home against the two and bar anchors. So and plus, it's just uh, when he misses, this is. There's a lot of gravy gammons. Look at to and psychologically, it's powerful to gammon a guy on his own cue. You know what I mean? Dana may be thinking about how good he has to be to recube next roll, but uh, he should. I think he should be more uh, optimistic and, and consider playing on for a gammon like right now. And now he's got to feel. He's very absolutely going to do that, and he would yeah. even if it, if it was a on the fence thing. If it was a close decision, he'd probably do that anyway because he's the kind of guy he wants to do the burn factor to his opponents. Now he <laughs> it really burns somebody to builder. gammon them on their own cue. And it, and it can still roll on confidently. Uh huh. Yeah, he's got to go. And I think what, what may have uh, influenced Dana to some extent is that, again, that extra checker that uh, John dumped onto his ace point. Oh, um, look at this. Oh, well, yeah, well, the extra checker, yeah. Now Dana still isn't too worried because uh, – Yeah, he's got total outfield control, a better John has board. has a lot of work to do, yeah. Now this goes to show you that how, you know, how much fear can affect our, our play because Dana took a cube that – we weren't sure was a take or a pass, and and uh, look at the powerful position he's developed. Yeah, at the time you you wouldn't imagine a scenario where he would be too good to redouble, but but here we are. And John has a you know he's playing it like a man. He's not chickening up. He's got to go and yeah. 
he's got to count on Dan and rolling something bad so he can get back into this. Otherwise, he's stuck there with two guys behind a five arm. Dana is now thinking about just cashing, punishing him with the redouble. Um, but Dana, I think, realizes it's more of a bluff than anything else. John has uh, very few numbers that won't give Dana a, a double drop next roll. Oh, yeah, okay. And this is an example of the, the value of only the cube. Do you think John should lift the blind after with the ace? Having lifted one already, I think John needs all of his checkers in play. And uh, not clear that if he were to hit, that that would really make things much worse for him. He's, he, he wants to recirculate uh, before his board crashes anyway. So I don't think he should lift now. Do you? I don't, I'm, I'm wondering if he, oh. if he doesn't lift, then he's going to have his sixes duplicated. So it looks like he did. And uh, that'll cut down on the gammons. He's in an awful lot of hot water here. Dana is just figuring out if he's still too good or not. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, for, uh, Dana, Dana enters on 20 out of uh, 36 rolls here. Um, I, I can't imagine that he's too worried about um, losing the game at this point, especially holding the cue, but it's certainly worth looking at. And he decides to roll on. Right. And if he, if he fanned and got hit and had two guys up, you know, John maybe still wouldn't have anything with those guys buried back there. Now, where's the ace? In one sense, it's, uh, you, you want to minimize shots. In another, you never know when that spare on the four may be of some value instead of uh, moving it to the three point. You may, you may need a spare two every now and then. Look at this. John is that hits. one six? Now, now Dana can uh, probably is not too good. Would you agree, Ray? I don't know. I'd have to, I'm going to take a look at this for a while. Um, let's see. You still got two guys back on the ace. Your favorite to come in. Did that? He hit with that six one. He didn't hit twice. He's rolling on. All right. But now Four. he's an awkward three to play. But I guess it's really the only option coming into his uh, six point. Now, if five four, John will uh, likely safety both checkers from uh, his side of the board. Yeah, it looks Just like. To, oh, he decides to. Uh, oh, he used the indirect two shots instead of bringing them both in and leave, instead of a direct two. Oh, well, I didn't even and, see uh, that. And now. Dana's got to go and he missed. Wow. Now Dana has to think a little bit about uh, cashing here. 6-1. Oh, man. Now. <laughs> Look at now, that. I, I, now, <laughs> Dana is definitely not too good if he. Uh, right. Is it good enough? Like, that. this is a scary position. So, wow. And John, he moved out there. Did he hit the clock already? No, he's thinking about it. But Boy, sixes I, I, don't grow on trees. He's got to get out of there. This is the play to win the game, isn't it? It's the, it's the, it's the play either to win the game or to escape for a two if you're trying to pass a cue. But. I think there's a, a, a very significant difference in equity here, and, and I would be very surprised if coming out were the uh, were the wrong play. Yeah, you got it. Basically, you don't have to like it, but you're going to have to do it. There he did it, and John, oh, Dana puts the maximum pressure. All right. Yeah. He oh, has wow. To. He had that figured. He was going to do that. Yeah. It says Dana enough of this playing on for the gammon stuff. Let let John figure it out. Unreal. It, and look at that. Dana has been a hitting, a hitting machine this whole week. He won the, what did he win? I can't think of the name of it. He beat Neil Kazaros in the final, seven to nothing. So he plows through some of the greatest players on the planet. And it's nerves of steel like this. How many of us would fire over a four cube while we're on the bar against a four and a half point board? Mm-hmm. And, and what do you think? What do you think of it? What do you think of the double, right? 
Well, I think he's, you know, if I would have doubled this, it would have taken me a lot longer to build up the nerve. I guess Dana's been uh, thinking about this for a while. He could have doubled it, you know, any of the other positions, but I, apparently he felt like he was too good. But Well, now the volatility is through the roof, right? Absolutely. And, uh, yes, we're, we're looking at a, an eight game. Possibly Absolutely. Dana winning the entire match if he gammons John from here. But so, on the other uh, hand, John's got a lot of gammons if Dana flunks. So it, it's an incredibly powerful cube when you're eight away, have gammon chances, and you're redoubling to four. I mean, there's no that's a good point. No wastage at all for your points, right? You're not, you're not overshooting. They go to 11. If Dana figures, hey, if I get to 11, this is the last game. There won't right, be any just, more games. You're just joining us uh, and are a fan of Spinal Tap. You picked the right time because this one goes to 11, this match. And uh, John O'Hagan is facing an incredibly difficult decision here. And this is the type of decision that. Uh, in a match, you should spend a significant amount of time considering before you act, and that's exactly what John is doing. He's, he must be thinking about match equities, about if he drops, he'll be down seven to two, uh, five to two, that mm -hmm. is, still with a lot of uh, chances, but that would give him uh, roughly at down five to two, about 30%, give or take, chances to win. My mass right. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, if you're an optimist, you take this and uh, you could win an eight cube yourself. Oh, yeah, an eight point game. But you know what? To answer your earlier question, would I, uh, do I think it's a double? I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. I know that for sure that I wouldn't have had the uh, required equipment to send this over. And Dana did it in about five seconds, right? He's putting maximum pressure on. So I couldn't have done this. And and I, I'm not sure I could have done that, but John takes Oh, it. look at this. There we go. We're going to have some action now. Oh, Dana dances. Ouch. And now <laughs> the hunter, hunty becomes the hunter. Oh, oh my sudden. God. The shoe is on the other foot. Now, John... He Obviously, can't considering a redo. Yeah. But, he, however, John will be killing his own gammons if he redoubles to eight. So he, my guess is John will conclude that he doesn't have a redouble unless he thinks Dana has a pass. If he concludes Dana has a take, you might as well keep rolling on because of your gammon chances. And I think Dana... De uh, Definitely, this is a take. Or oh, whatever. and you, you, oh my God! John doesn't think very long before recubing, and I'm sure that means that he was thinking about the recube all along. He was wondering, <laughs> "What will I do if Dana dances?" And he concluded he was going to redouble. And here we go. Oh man, it's not very often you see a snowman in September. <laughs> But we are in Minnesota. <laughs> it's 80 degrees out there. I, oh, my God. And now, Dana, what's he going to do? I, you know what? He's man enough to take this. And well, uh, it's a reasonable take anyway, isn't it? I mean, he's winning this game almost half the time on the next turn. I mean, if he just well, enters. Or... Let's look at it. John, John has sevens and tens to cover. Right away. Uh, but in which case, twos. Dana still can come in with a two. Well, he has twos and threes to put a second checker up on the bar. Yeah. Dana, it seems like Dana's, Dana has amazing um, Viper-like potential if he ever hits that checker on the four point, which he, he may do. It up. He takes it, and off we go. And a terrible roll. Relatively speaking, for John O'Hagan, double fours. He can't do anything. He can't hit either checker he was aiming at, 
he can't cover his block, and he can't even lift it. Oh my God! Uh, if, helps if him if in the I race, but that's about it. By, if a herd of forest goes by, John's going to be in a lot of trouble. Look at Dana. I knew Dana was going to be man enough to take that. And uh, that's tough. But let's see. So what's John going to do with his last four? Well, folks, if you don't like this game, you don't like that game. I may not get another chance to say this, but if you like it, hit the like button on your YouTube page and subscribe. And visit the usbgf.org page to uh, maybe someday be as skillful as these two players are. And I make just decisions. hit the like button and I'm going to subscribe. John is going to clean up the blocks. Now let's see if Dana. 12 numbers, Dana's thinking. And that's not one of them. Oh. 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 Heartbreaking. Oh, man. Now. All John really needs to do is to roll a six. But even now, Dana has He's 11 got twos. Half a dozen numbers that hit, man. He's by no means out of it. John is praying for a six. Small number. At least it doesn't waste many of his spare pips. But at some point, ongoing dancing favors Dana, right? Because John is the only one whose board is going to crash here. John can stand maybe one more double four, and that's it. It's about time for a two six from the bar, I think. Oh, <laughs> no. Another three one. Take the uh -oh. picture, John. Got to like it, but we'll see if it lasts until John rolls a six. Oh, he'll get one. Two one. It's oh, torture. Boy. Fortunately, for all the fans. Fortunately, John has some time. Oh, a terrible roll by John. This is the worst oh, my number he goodness. can have. Now Dana's back in and if he rolls a six. Oh, that's how you roll a six, John O'Hagan, Dana says. <laughs> oh, that's cold. Now <laughs> what's the right play? Oh, boy. Now, oh, he's leaving maximum fly shots. I would have brought – oh, no, he, had to, he, couldn't, he had to leave. Okay. All Dana has to do now is win the game. He doesn't care about gammons or anything. He wins the Who game. Who owns the cube? The Dana match. owns it. There's no double out. Oh, yeah, he can't double oh. out. Oh. Five. Unbelievable. Turn Dana out the lights. Dead. The party's over. <laughs> All right. Well, John had what, about five shots to roll his six and get out. You know, somebody tells me that's exactly what John's saying to himself right about now. <laughs> How <laughs> could I not roll a six? Look I at him. Five or six chances. His expression never changed. They would have to pull me through the ceiling right now. Yeah. That's that's John's how could I not have rolled a six face? <laughs> but if he had rolled a six, he'd have the same facial expression. So that would be his I just rolled a six face. And Dana so John said through that. And they, and he never changed his expression either. Yeah. Oh so man. I, which I really admire. I think that's I'm I'm old school that way. I think you, you don't wear your emotions on your sleeve. Well, I have to admire it, but I'm not. A you subscribe of that to a different club. school, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dana. All right, Dana. Dana just clears from the back. He wants to play safe. John is hoping to dance. And Dana is hoping not to roll big doubles. Yeah, he is. Come on, give us for the fans. Small give us doubles. Set. Dana can live with that just fine. Dana is now. Teasing John somehow. He's wondering if John rolls double sixes and then rolls some more double sixes. Should I take two checkers off? And he's going to conclude, no, I shouldn't. I'll just clear from the five point. But yeah, this is the type of thing where John has to be saying to himself, come on, Dana, put me out of my misery. Yeah, it's uh or or he's hoping he makes that play because uh that's really John's only chance. He has virtually no racing equity at this point. Yeah, don't you shouldn't pull the wings off the fly here. Just clear the five point and call it a day and go get the trophy. Um, the worst thing about this situation is that uh, we don't get to comment on any more games, unfortunately. It is. It's been fun. Unless Dana takes the two off the three point. Yeah. Now, it's true. It's true. John has some slight racing equity if he rolls. 
Double sixes or double fives. Two six in the bar. John is upset at the dice on checker uh, rule that's now in play. He didn't get to roll again, but so be it. And now it's, everything's over except for the uh, stoic congratulations at the end. Yeah, and these guys will be talking about those cube decisions, and I'm going to be down there listening. By the <laughs> way, report. The Let me know what they say. Yeah, the, the board they're playing on, I'm waiting to play the finals to see who wins that board in the board tournament. Uh, are you in the finals of that? Yeah. Oh, well, best of luck, Ray. I didn't All know right, that. brother. Well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the USBGF for making the stream possible and uh, invite anyone who's watched this match to, uh, to become members of the USBGF. It's a wonderful organization. And uh, is the best thing going for backgammon in the United States. Uh, I want to congratulate also um, April and Michael uh, Message for uh, running an excellent tournament. I think you can vouch for that, right, Renee? Oh man, uh, they're the best, and uh, and they've got the greatest commentators possible. <laughs> I'm so stipulated, my friend. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, and thanks very much, and congratulations, Dana, and uh, that's too bad, John. <laughs> it's it's too bad, you know, that John uh, lost in two finals, but I guess I've had bigger problems than that. And uh, to, uh, to Dana, welcome to the Beaver Club, the winner of the Grand Crystal Beaver Masters event here at the... Uh, Minnesota State Championships. And he um, won the Friday Frigga. So he's a two-time champion. That's well done. Well done to both players. Thank, every, thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in. And uh, on behalf of Ray Fogel, and this is Doran Bishop. Uh, roll well and take care. And good night, everyone.